The moment of creation is a form of magic, where an off becomes an on, a zero becomes a one, then another, and another, until, deep in the complexity, you discover order, speed, reliability, power. Experience with WD Black MVME SSD. Level up to MVME SSD performance. Numerous forces aimed at the Earth. All righty then, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the W Black Esports Club League for Rainbow Six Siege, powered by LG Ultra Gear, in association with AC5 and Zotai Gaming and Games The Shop. I am your host, Blackjack, joining you with my co-host, Sam and Foxy, as we are here for the game between Team Waha and the newcomers on Day 3 of Division 2 in Season 3. That's right, Division 2 Week 2 is now officially underway, and Team Waha will be taking on newcomers today for our first match. We've got two more after this, of course, between the Peacemakers and Virtual 5, and Kira Esports versus Phoenix, all of which are going to be exciting matches. But right now, we are going to be heading into the map of Cafe Dostoevsky between newcomers and Team Waha. So, Foxy, how do you feel on this fine evening? Oh, I feel amazing, Blackjack. Thank you for asking. And I'm really excited to kick off Division 2 today. That is week two, in fact. Had an amazing run in terms of how week one went by. And Division 2, I've got to be honest here, it's it's been quite the show. We've had so many differences in terms of how our, the standings have turned out to be. And uh, more importantly, there's just been this uh, this major differential in terms of how teams have been playing and performing. And it's just amazing to see that. Uh, we'll be heading uh, to the game anytime soon now. We've got the Thatcher band coming up for us. As I quickly look up on my notes here, that is the standings of these teams in the division right now where they stand at just a second. There we go. Division 2, uh, we've got Vector Sports topping off on the leaderboard. That is, they've got themselves a 2-0 victory so far. They won both the matches that they've played in Week 1. 
and uh, meanwhile, a lot of interesting bands though. Maverick and Mira will get banned as well. All right, Maverick, we really haven't seen Maverick band come out. Team Waha will be choosing to ban that operator on Cafe of all maps. I'm not sure if that's that's something they were expecting. Maybe it's just because that with the Thatcher not into play, the Maverick could become something useful. But the way Cafe is played is not a clubhouse, mind you. You can still have so many other options for yourselves into getting breaches done, even without a Thatcher or a Maverick. That is Maverick, not exactly the band you want to go for on Cafe. But the fourth band that will be coming out is Maestro. All right, that's a defensive band from the side of newcomers as well. They'll be starting off on defense. Mira, obviously, we haven't really seen a whole lot of Mira being played when it comes to Cafe. But, uh, well, let's not waste any more time and get into this match. Well, as I was speaking about the standings, we've got uh, Moha and uh, there is a newcomers here uh, standing up against each other. Newcomers, sadly, happen to be on the bottom of the entire leaderboard and Moha sit on the sixth position. That is, there's just one team in between their spots right now. Sixth and eighth position teams fighting for themselves as of now. And uh, mind you, this is week two. That means all the while more opportunities. We have seen many twists and turns when it has come to Division Three. Team Super, who had zero victories in week one, now topping on rank number four. So uh, there's always that, um, what do you say? There's always a climb that you can make when it comes to a league pool. But Let's take us back into this game now. All eyes on Cafe. Okay. Uh, at least I'll be I'll be uh, very happy. I'm sure Blackjack is as well. That we are getting to see a clubhouse today. And uh, more interestingly, this is officially the first match that I'm getting to cast since Operation Steel Wave. So let's take a look at both these rosters first. Nexus, Roxxon, Skill, Mellow, and Radhima on the side of Team Waha. You want to know, know them as Constant Esports. While we have Salty Satish, Optica, Adam, AMST, and Lord Bane on the side of newcomers. So, the reason I have to emphasize that is exactly because of the proximity alarm that Salty Satish is bringing out on the castle. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Blackjack, but I don't really remember what has been traded out for the castle for the alarm. He lost his impacts. Thank you. So, no impacts, but still has a super shorty. I say that's a really good balance, but oh, oh boy, he takes a few. Takes a few bullets to his body from the Echo there. And uh, the Echo will be left into play. And AMST bring out the Echo, a very wise decision indeed. Just something that uh, they'll definitely have to bring in to get the advantage that they need for themselves. Mello will be running the Zofia. He's been amazing with the Maestro and his Zofia plays. I've got to say that from Mello. And Nexus, he'll be running the Thermite, all right. Very interesting. Nexus has had an amazing... Uh, in fact, Team 1, now that I think about it, Hey, really kill comes in from Salty Satish all the way from the planks window. That is Mellow goes down just as I speak for him. That's the first frag for Division 2 week 2 to start things off. Yeah, coming back to what I was trying to say is the fact that Team Moha, they might stand on the 6th position in the entire Division 2. But something we've got to notice is the fact that they happen to go on their every single match onto overtime. That is something we don't get to see. You know, that was every single match for them was uh, quite close. One of them even went over the maximum overtime, but going 6-6 six, six is, uh, is is just a little, I would say, <laughs> it's a little too too much demanding for the players. We'll be seeing no skill to get a kill, and that does bring in the equalizer. A 4-4 four four already established in terms of man count. The Sledge knows there's a shield into play, and he's just going to peek, or oh, not going to white peek this. He's just waiting for him to make any mistakes, but why might? All the while, more careful about the peaks that he's willing to make, or maybe he's just choosing them not to. He'll be waiting in patience as of now for his teammates to give him some calls and himself all the crossfires established. But enough time being wasted here from their side. While well, Roxanne will be coming out with the Hermano Breach. Very nice indeed. A good emphasis in terms of how they intend to do this. But Adam is here today taking those Hermano pellets off as well. He would be able to do that in time. But meanwhile, AMST from the long angle is going to pick out and drop the diffuser. That is Nexus of the board. Going to come down to the IQ, the Sledge and the Hermano that is. 3 versus 4 now. Really not in the favor of the attacking team, but look at this push up has got to get caught out from the Momai and the snitch goes down. No scare, definitely. Another player that is trying to make Optica is going to get another frag. Roxanne is all that is left for the side of Team Moha to get themselves a surviving chance in this. Only 30 seconds left, and uh, no, just to speak about it, a nice new font that we're getting for the timer here. I somehow like the old one, but it's going to take, take me some time to sink in this new one. But he's making his way up. Roxanne will be catching anybody off guard. No, he won't. At least as of now, newcomers are very 
he uh, invested in terms of how they want to keep this uh, defense strong and they will well, picks up the last frag and Adam is gonna drop a quick headshot onto Roxanne and that secures newcomers a very dominating first round mind you only one life lost a very good round coming in from them and more importantly it happened to be newcomers they sit at the bottom like I said the eighth spot that's the last spot that you have the last rank in your entire division newcomers playing exactly like they're supposed to they're bringing out the guns alive they're bringing out the strategies alive and they're making sure that they move their way up the leaderboard because if they don't they're gonna have to fall back onto division three that is something you don't want to happen when lucy will be performing amst i believe that is going to be six pick but meanwhile blackjack any thoughts on how this match is going to proceed ahead well, uh, for one, if off the back of that last round, if both these teams continue to play the way we saw newcomers pull out this first round, for instance, if uh, Team Moha have some rounds like that under their belt uh, on this attack before Roswap, mind you, then we could be in for yet another doozy of a game. But that uh, remains to be seen because whether or not we're going to have overtime or how close it's going to be is a long ways away. And uh, actually something I wanted to mention, Foxy, since uh, you mentioned that this is your first time casting for Operation Steel Wave, since uh, you had some unfortunate issues yesterday, uh, this is actually, technically speaking, my first time casting Division 2 in Season 3 as well, because last week I was out of it because of some health complications, and uh, I wasn't able to cast Division 2 either, so it's a, it's a day of firsts for the both of us. This is... Uh, Definitely, <laughs> definitely very interesting uh, little observation I had right there. First World Kitchen is a sight from the side of uh, newcomers and uh, Team Moha definitely will be wanting to equalize right here on the round count. But again, if newcomers have the same sort of defense that they had in round one, then Team Moha will definitely have to pick up their game. And uh, one thing I definitely like to mention right here is the weapon attachment skins. You can see uh, Mello with the all black sight and uh, Buck with the all tan sight for that matter, as uh, they look absolutely wonderful. There's a little bit of extra customization that uh, really makes the game feel like it's in our hands. Of course, some players don't have them. Maybe they don't know about it. Maybe they didn't get them, but uh, it's uh, definitely one of the things that Steel Wave has brought that has caught a lot of people's attention in a positive light, which is, uh, Something Siege really would like. Uh, coming to this particular matchup right now, Melo just staring at a blank wall for no reason. Radhema is actually all the way back at spawn of River Dogs with the Diffuser. He's finally moving. He was busy droning for the rest of his team, but looks like his drone either got taken out or is in a position where he can just leave it be for the time being. Vertical lens side are already being established by No Skill the Buck. He's going to claim her out. The Red Stairs as well. And uh, hold it down for the time being as uh, a, an air jab gets put down there as well. That's a lot of that's a lot of uh, reinforcing on that one particular area. Another air jab on the white stairs push up as the self has made his way there as well. And for the most part, it looks like a uh, turtle hold from the side of newcomers right now, but they definitely are going to be very apprehensive about this vertical play that uh, Team Mohar bring out. The nitro cell not really doing a whole lot as uh, a breach comes out onto the hatch of kitchen by thermite putting down his uh, brimstone on the soft floor instead of on the actual hatch itself and the explosion being wide and powerful enough to actually take out the entire hatch well played right there to radema but roxana's taking a bit of damage in the meanwhile not sure where that came out looks like it may have been from fighting those vertical angles but now uh, Team Moha have to start making their way in towards side. Lorbin's gonna find Roxanne. That's a big kill right there. Zofia opens up the red carpet hallway. The castle barricade that was blocking off that line of sight. But there's so many defenders just crawling here. Will he find one? He's trying to find the quick picking Jaeger, but Lord Baines is gonna pull back and not take that fight for the time being. He knows time is in their advantage, and newcomers, all they have to do is sit back and relax and not really worry about it too much as the castle has made his way halfway up red stairs as well. And believe that is Bandit, who is very close to the entryway door that Zofia was at. But Zofia makes his way towards Code Check right now. Optica gets down, but no, the Zofia goes for the peak too, only to be taken out by Amst, AMST who took down a mellow. The Band-Aid is here in the main corridor, but I think somebody's already inside of Cold Room. That might just be rather Mother Thermite, and he's Rather's the one with the Diffuser, but no, he goes down to a beautiful peak from the Bandit. There is the Buck in there, but now I am Snows that there's the Nomad, but the Nomad gets taken out, and so does Nexus. No skill and Nexus going down very quickly to Salty Satish and Lord Bane as, uh, oh boy, it looks like absolutely not a good situation for the side of uh, 
Team Moaha, round two goes to newcomers, and it looks like we'll be going into a rehost coming out from the side of Team Moaha. Apparently, there are ping spike issues from their end, and we'll be having a rehost nice and quickly. And I know everybody, none of us really like rehosts, neither us at the castle seat nor anyone at watching back at home, but we'll just have to deal with it for the time being. We'll be right back with this rehost very shortly. Stay tuned. Actually, going to care about it's five times, just straight up walking in. But Oxy's going to lose that fight in the air. 
is out on the spider time. Spider time gets a triple kill for himself. Can he get two more? He gets one. Oh, that's a cool kill. Does he get the even the real question? Spider time. So far, he's getting all the kills on the board for this team. He needs five seconds and a frag. Does he find the yellow? He doesn't know where she's playing. She gets her out. Whoa! He the enemies. If he tells me to. Oh my god. Went for a peek, wasn't able to find anybody, but instead a drone saw him as he's gonna go for the vertical angle, but no, Dip Jones just too good. And Skiffy is, is gonna go down. That is unfortunately how proceedings are gonna happen. And it's a hatch drop onto blue and a rush towards side from the side of Valiant. Archie Angel spots Chris Ross, Dutch set goes down as well. It's all down to Warhead to do anything about this. Will he be able to know he's actually down and uh, taken out as it's all down to Angry Bot to do something about this? Time required for the counter DPs. Angry Bot, of course, giving enough time for his team to confer, but he's gonna go down to the as. Really strong, you've got something on your hand, the Rekaban is gonna make it go inside uh, the map and get a quick frag on to the player playing on 90. He's gonna spot the Valk and he's gonna get another shot. Lancer's gonna go down in the process and Ateban's gonna get two as the C4 comes out from the side of Stoneheart. That's gonna get Lancer and Invalid off the board. As Ateban is sitting inside and he's gonna get Stoneheart as well. This guy's just walking in. He's Hopefully some uh, the, you know, the rotation from the diffuser the defender's trying to make and Nani on the other hand will eventually take out Roskill. Raksan will be there to take out Tusker eventually getting a uh, eventually getting an axis here but uh, Nani on the meanwhile gets a quarter kill. He just needs one more kill for the ace and uh, there you have it boys virtual 5 esports uh, with uh, Nani making an ace uh, and quite making an entry frag as well as a good place there. Uh, gone down as Athar was not going to be paying attention as it's all down to their tamar in a 1v3 he clutched this out so he has some time on his side he has some calls from his drones I believe as he is going to go, go for the repel his call has been his position is known Dhanu is going to be there he's not going to be able to contest that Melo is also going to peek him who's going to lose his life as uh, Diffuse is going down from Raksan but no death Amar is going to be there to take him out so Sixline goes down, that's the snipes, and that is another huge kill. A lot of more utility that has just been taken out from Never Diamonds' arsenal. Jaeger's gonna find another one somehow. He's still alive inside of Cigar Lounge. Cobra doing so much damage for his team. He's gonna go for the jump out. Will he find one more? No, he won't. And he will be cleaned up on too by Mojo. But there's another one. And the dock gets taken out by Mojo as well. Mike cleans up to one, but the bang nine comes out. And uh, that is a quick double kill from Veneno as looks like level 0 all they wanted to do was jump out. Sparkle meanwhile gets caught up by Hasid. That's a Jaeger once again. Coming back alive. He's gonna spot the no matter. Look at that shot from Hasid. What are you doing? The Jaeger gets that frag. What an amazing run out from Hasid. And the Jaeger is gonna convert that in fact. He's doing influential for most of these so far. But at this pace, he's gotta get spotted out. He's gonna get a frag. That's one kill. He's gonna get find another. Yes, he went Ooh. at a one tap. Hasib with clutch comes in. Four frags and a quad kill clutch from the man. I'm not sure. Oh, oh, oh boy, EX7 coming with the big and he's gonna claim the life of my seven to out of Ninja Creek. In a one versus two. He's gonna find the mozzie and he's got to find the whack. Everybody will be so low at HP. He can even make this happen if he wants to. But the real question is will he be able to do that or not? He has some cover for himself, will be attempting the plan, and he'll be sticking it apparently. Oh, he's gonna find the Valkyrie, he doesn't know where the monster is playing, he's gonna re-attempt the plan, but this is going to be a big plan most possibly. Oh, the P comes in and Ninja Freak comes in with the one was two clutch from the side of Mercy Nuri. He's a bit of damage as well as he was gonna be coming out, Poseidon has taken one, B took another one actually, make that a 2v2 right now, make that a 1v2, it's all of a sudden down to Hasid, the castle, but do they get the plan up? Yes they do, Beat is going for it, but he will be denied! Hasid with the play in the strategic position that he was in is gonna deny the Thermite from going for the play.
it all comes under Kanda, Blanky, Kanda and Blanky for that matter. As Sai, but it's gonna go down as well. Kanda, the only one full on HP, Blanky goes down. He gets a double for himself. Ooh. He's a nice player and win a oh. triple from Kanda. It's all down to Simplex to clutch it in a one versus one. But Simplex is going to be inside deep arsenal. Bullets, but the smoke is not the SMG 11 pushing up to him. Only 11 bullets left in his mag. He has to make this clutch happen, but he won't. Oh. Zero sabers. Definitely cutting that. Uh, defender is off the board, but a Seifer comes in. Will it take him? No! A double kill from Rico Mishma and Drizzle right there. Ash Shakti will deny the refuser, but he will see two. He will still get them. And he gets the Monty right here. The mute is making things happen for his team. The C4 and the, S the shotgun that is coming to life for the side of Z Rush. He's in a 1v1 right now with Nikuri, so the Maverick, and he knows where he's pushing from. And the Maverick knows where Shakti is sitting. A great play by the Mute, but will he be able to convert on it and give themselves a round win? The Maverick's gonna go for the plant, but he's baiting. But no, nope, Shakti will see him. He will ace it right here for the side of Zerush. And as many shots as he can, but there's only so much that Jaeger can do. And he can do a lot, actually. This is gonna get himself a double kill. Catch up Diffuser down as well. Drizzle making some plays happen. He's gonna get a third. That's your Kali of the board. Winning a 1v1 in that angle with the Kali. It's a four. Drizzle with the quad still coming in for the side off. You will see when he gets the ace. He goes in for the free fire, but the drone B comes in from the Doko B. Will he make some plays happen is the real question. Another go charge goes out, but nothing to catch over here. Just gonna move in right now. He does find the Maestro, and what a headshot connecting onto Cobra. Wiper gets the first try, he gets the second. Does he get the third? He gets the third as well. And is obliterating Never Diamonds right now. He's cutting them through. It's all around the Shulker and Mojo to keep things alive for themselves. Very influential operators for Never Diamonds. And that's a triple kill for Mike. It's all around the Cobra, all of a sudden. He gets the frag onto the Thermite now. It's a one versus one. Not sure what the Thermite was doing, eating away the electric fuel charges from the bandit definitely in a very confused spot for that man as maestro does spot the twist zone coming close to him and that is what is going to give away his position mike taking away one hp from the maestro while he himself stays on 20. The maestro cam goes out first he's gonna notice that and that is it a finisher from never diamonds as what a play from them on this first half fight but he's not even gonna focus on it what are you doing seth the planner is out in front of you he gets that refrag in it's all on the bajay now in a one versus two clutch moment He's got to make this play happen. Gets the planter. That's at least somebody from Eastern Esports is noticing where the planter is. It's all down to Sam. And a one versus one now. He's got to make this clutch happen if he wants the advantage against Eastern Esports. It's a SMG 11 versus the L8 coming in. The diffuse counter. Oh, he gets that. Bajai with the clutch coming in on a one versus two. The Mew is going to put the equalizer on board for the side of Eastern Esports. Nadoria is still playing very close to site. Point X, alright, he's gonna tag up his Opia, but nothing to do so far. Nadoria's any time now to make this push happen. Point X, don't take down on me, that's a push that is not expecting maybe. Nadoria has to make this play happen. That's part of the oh boy, the C4 comes in, that's a diffuser drop, he gets the cover as well. Notorious playing on a very influential spot, he's gonna get the drop down. Can he get the capital? Yes, he does. Notorious once again coming in with the one versus two clutch essentially. Pointex made his way inside, but the free fires give away his position. He's still gonna win that and he's gonna fall down to Pointex. Meanwhile, another drop happens that is not going to get taken out. Oh, is that an interrogation coming in? Yes, it is. Mighty is gonna get one, he is gonna get another. Not only goes down, it's a triple kill for the Kibera right now. And the interrogation is live for the defenders. The push comes in, Tsukushima goes lighting up him. C4 does get spotted out by him. The audio cues are being given away. He's gonna take that C4 away. But at what cost is a real question. A one versus four and the Kibera is here to greet him with the silent step. And a four right now is not essentially much emphasis, but the black is already closed in. The alibi does find one. That's Tsukushima goat out of the way. He gets rattled. But Amor is here to refrag onto him. Yes, he will. That's a two versus two right now. And he must force if they do, it's only gonna come down from snow. Death on still very, very patient. Does not do Zopia. He gets the kill. A very nice one. That's a triple kill for Death Thomas so far. And the alibi. Actually, Snow is here to get that frag onto him. Death Thomas maneuvering himself back and he gets the frag. Kira he's supposed to walk away with a quad kill. Starting off from this man. Now for Demon's Force and Quantum Demon for that matter. Oh, look at that. 
Fukushima Gold is going to claim the life of Oni Cage with that amazing C4 coming in from him, but the push from Rongi has happened. B is the one making that push, but he's going to lose that gun fight to Tsukushima Gold. It's all on Poseidon. He's got to make some plays happen, but Tsukushima Gold once again proving the last suffix that he's got himself in the name, the group. All righty then, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the game between newcomers and Team Moha on the map of Cafe Dostoevsky. We are back from the rehost and from the side of uh, newcomers, I believe that is, Danu is, excuse me, Team Moha, Danu is back in the lobby. He's uh, He had to be subbed in for, I believe that was Radhema. Uh, not sure what happened, but uh, he is back. He's here. And we are going to be moving nice and quickly into the game. In fact, Danu has had a six pick out of the Dekebi into the Nomad. And looks like he's having some loading problems. Which, of course, means you all know it's coming. He probably needs to buy a WD Black <clears throat> SSD stumbled over my words right there. We're gonna be moving into second floor reading from the side of Newcomers on the defense because they have one third floor barn first floor kitchen back to back and as the loading completes uh, The score of course stands at two to zero. It's uh, certainly gonna be quite interesting, isn't it Foxy? Uh, most definitely, but uh, oh, there we go finally just as I was about to say that uh, then was got to get himself a WD Black SSD. He'll gonna take some time to load as as of now because Danu though, well, I really haven't seen him anywhere around the MVP leaderboard. And you know for a fact that if you happen to be at the top of the MVP leaderboard, you can get yourselves a very a very free, in fact, a WD Black SSD is up for the grabs for anybody who happens to be at the top of the game, very consistent, and more than that. Always making sure that they are having um, to perform at their best. You bring that kind of performance up, you will. You might as well get yourself a black SSD. So speaking of which, the MVP is the time around for Division Two were uh, from V5, then Superior. The third position was from Vector Spot. So we didn't really have a newcomers or a team or MVP coming up on week one, but now with the standings in difference or at least uh, bound to take a different, different turn, we might as well see some teams happen to have a little bit more emphasis in terms of how week two looks like. But definitely we'll be uh, heading into that little detail later as we proceed towards this match as of now. Texas running the IQ, running the LMG in fact. A very good pick. I can only understand why you want to employ the IQ because there's an echo in play as well. You've got to be careful about that Lord Bane once again. Taking on the Shaiko spot as I like to call it. Gonna be down below the paintings on the new ass drop. Everybody peeking him will get taken away, and that is why nobody shall choose to peek him as of now. Lord Bale is still gonna hold this very tight angle. He's gotta be very, very careful about how he intends to hold this. And a very good emphasis in terms of how the top floor control is going on. Essentially, four people invested in top. And look at that square that they're forming up top. Satish on the white stairs. We've got AMST with the echo on the side of cocktail lounges. Lord Bean will be picking up a fight here. Oh, more than that, he's going to be picking up a kill here. A straight up headshot comes in onto Raksan. That's already your Hibana off the board. A very important frag, and more than that, your only hard feature off. And a frag from Lord Bean. A shot from the Jaeger is going to claim another life. No skill goes down. A pretty good headshot indeed from the man connecting it with, but this has already made his way onto site. Miller's going to get a frag, at least to compliment the fact that he's made his way onto site. Danu, I think he's above. No, he gets taken away by the Jaeger once again, and that's Lord being with the triple kill. Trying to find two more is a real question, but Melo is already going down with the plant. Oh, no, that is Nexus. Already said he's beating the planter any moment now. He's not going to be doing that any time soon. Plan has gone down. Lord Bane is here with another frag. That's a quad kill for the man. Does he get the Ares? Oh, yes, he does get it. And look at this play from the side of newcomers. They get themselves the Ares on the third round of the bat. 3 0 is the score line as we proceed. Round four. Play from the Sager. Well played. Oh, That's <laughs> definitely well played. Absolutely wonderfully played from Lord Bane. Not just on the top floor defense, not just those three Rome clear ops, but also making his way back to site, flanking through Train Museum onto the fireplace and through it onto the unsuspecting IQ to finish things off and <laughs> the honor of the counter defuse as well. Very well played indeed to Lord Bane, and the man has come alive truly with the Jaeger as the side of newcomers have completed a full lap 
around the uh, around the map of Cafe, Cafe Dostoevsky. They've won through Bar, Kitchen, and Reading on all three floors, and we're going to be heading back to Bar on to round four right here. Six pick comes out from Roxanne out of the Hibana into the sledge. So no hard breach coming out from the side of Team Moha at all. Very interesting decision indeed. And once again, we're going to be waiting here in the lobby just a little bit. No, actually, we won't be waiting for too long. Dhanu this time has a little bit of a better load situation. But of course, to completely get rid of that, a WD back SSD is in order. Attackers need to locate... No, definitely not been <laughs> uh, bringing out the infection is, but uh, name I would say. You know, he uh, played like a lord in that round. And more importantly, it was... Uh, I, I'm, actually, I'm not gonna uh, uh, beat, beat around the bush for it. I'm just gonna say it. That's a highlight. That's definitely oh, yes. a highlight. I mean, oh, the yes. way the man played, double, triple hit shots, in fact, and the finisher double kill as well. I mean, you don't know if the strategy for newcomers worked out well or not, but definitely it worked out well for Lord Bane that round, especially. Coming to round four, Blackjack, the mic is all yours. Uh, thank you for that, Foxy. And uh, yeah, just a little bit more uh, emphasis on how those sorts of plays are, uh, you know, we like to see them. We all love to see it. And uh, Lord Bane will definitely be having our eyes on him going forward see, to see what more he brings out for us at the WB Black the Esports Club League for Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, Team Moha, on the other hand, of course, they have to keep their eyes on all the defenders right now because it's not just Lord Bane. Uh, across these last three rounds that we've had so far, the entirety of newcomers have managed to find ways to shut them down time and time again. And once again, Lord Bane on the Shaiko spot, he's been very active to take the fight here on the new hatch. Uh, and uh, so far, it's been worked out. It's been working out. You know, he's never really been grenaded out of here, never been shot out of here. He always moves out of here of his own volition and never been contested from the skylight either. Although the skylight angle is a little bit harder, I don't think actually you can get this angle, unless I'm mistaken here, onto where Lord Bane is sitting, which makes this angle... No, you have, you only have to spot the foot mm. of the defender. Ah. Just a little, yeah. Yeah, so you're bound to probably miss it uh, more often than mm. not, so yeah. Uh, so, you know, the Shaiko spot, always a good place to be for any defender who's looking to play aggressive or even defensive, even uh, waste some time, make the attackers a little apprehensive about pushing any particular spot. But right now, Lord Bane, he's just looking for any attackers that he can find. Meanwhile, Team Waha seems to have gone into the second row right here. Dhanu and No Skill are here. And Raksan actually is going to take down Lord Bane. Was that from the Rappel? Yes, it was. The Rappel on the East Balcony, East Heaven Balcony, all the way to the Shaiko spot. Maybe I'm not entirely... I can't exactly see. Oh, there he is. He's on the second floor red carpet. And uh, I believe he may have been going downwards. I'm not sure what exactly happened there. But unfortunately, Lord Bane is down, but they, Echo is going to find one more. That is no skill off the board. Amps with that kill. AMS, excuse me, with that kill. is going to equalize the man count right now. But he's, oh, he's going to get another one. That is Mellow gone as well. That's the Zofia and the Buck, both of whom were trying to play vertical from second floor, have been taken off the board. But there is still a repeller. That is Raksan on the East Heaven balcony. And Nexus is going to join him on the window of Cocktail Lounge right here. And uh, it could go very well or it could go very badly for the side of Team Maha. Raksan's going to come in. Is he going to be uncontested just for now? Is he going to find the guy on red stairs? Not quite yet. He's peeking it. He's peeking it. He's taking shots. He's taking a lot of damage. As Dhanu's going to find Salty Sajish in the meanwhile. That was a peeking castle. But no, there's a legion to take him out. And Echo's going to find the Nexus who was trying to make his way in through the rappel. And bodies dropping like flies once again as Team Waha just caught. Oh, that is a, that's a little bit of disrespect right there. Yeah. They turn around, hip fire. Not exactly a good look for Nexus at all, but a great look for newcomers on the defense right now. Round four goes to them, 4-0. Going into round five, two rounds away from Rosop. This is definitely a very dominating performance here in the early game. Oh, Blackjack, more than that, we've got to... Got to emphasize the fact that newcomers, they are at the bottom of the leaderboard. They mm -hmm. sit on the eighth position. Oh boy, what a play from newcomers coming in. The, the, not only that, the week two has definitely brought in a lot of plot twists. I've got to tell, the, tell you this, and more than that, I've got to tell the viewers this because we had Division 3 come up uh, a few days ago as well. That is obviously the day before and the day before that. Need to locate and we did have an amazing climb up of Team Super. 
from all the way on the seventh position, the seventh spot in the league on their division. Napa to climb back to fourth. And look at that massive difference that they've made only in two play days. I mind you, that, that is why the league happens to favor on whoever happens to grind. And it looks like newcomers have put in the grind. They've used the time that they had to prepare for the second week. And they are here with the 4-0 already against Team Waha, who happens to sit above them right now at the league table. But from the looks of it, newcomers might as well snatch away that rank from them. More than that, move way up the leaderboard. Zero wins so far for newcomers on week one, but week two seems to differ. Let's see on how this match will turn up eventually, though. Team Waha is not a team you want to be counting on. You have seen maximum more times from Waha. That means they do have that comeback potential for them. So, we wouldn't definitely count Waha out the way that the players are as well. You know, it's some dominable roster that they have. So, as we proceed later in the round, we will definitely find that out, even with the role swap coming in. That might be a dynamic that uh, either of the team, either of these teams need. In fact, but as of now, it's the newcomer show, and only stands to see on how Maha will be standing up to them. Melo makes his way upstairs, but no skill is going to be the one to find a frag. That's Lord Bane of the board. That's your main fragger for the Saturday newcomers, the one who happens to get almost all the kills and very particular rounds. In fact, won't be doing any more killing as of now. A second turtle hold is not into play from newcomers this time around, and that is exactly why they've lost a man early. Last time they won the kitchen and service side, they did have somebody, uh, they didn't they did not have anybody roaming up top, and everybody was on site. I gave them otherwise more sp uh, space to work with. They had the C4s into play as well, but this time around, they'll be only AMST with the C4. Mind you, that's only one C4, no Kaid. That's something that we've got to emphasize as well. They have got the Breacher uh, into play, that is the Thermite and the Hibana, mind you. So it's not going to be... Yeah, there you go, as we speak about it. It's not going to be exactly a huge task to get the hatch open. But uh, definitely, if you want to secure your entry point inside the site without only having yourself the hatch open, you will have to do a whole lot more than that. They've got the nades from the sledge. Even to try and take out the breeze that they're intending to make on Freezer. It's more essentially the kind of play that you like to make, in case you're not trying to... Uh, push on towards the side of bakery, but I do hear the thermite uh, place this chart somewhere. Oh, the solar wall on the red hallway. Are you making that push happen anytime soon? Oh, but the main priority for him is going to be the freezer wall, but most of the time, Frag instead. Adam goes down. And look at it. It's just like I said, you don't want to come Waha out. They definitely know exactly how to play this, and they will well turn tables around as they move to defense, but it looks like they're already doing the heavy lifting on attack. Optica does get spotted out. He's going to move back. He's got the drone though. What else has he got? He's not got much here. He's gonna fall it down as well, along with Melo taking out double frag and Nexus with the last frag onto AMST. And flawless run comes in from Team Waha. Just as I speak about it, just as I have to tell the audience about the fact that you don't want to count this team out. It's not like newcomers is just dominating them. Waha still in the game and they made their presence felt that last round. That being said, we'll be proceeding to round six, one round for the role swap. Oh boy, this round uh, definitely proving to us that Team Moha have a lot of comeback potential in them. Going to Kitchen against newcomers and completely shutting them down. A flawless round for that matter. And one round away from the roll swap. Round six, that is. One to four is the scoreline. Raksan's going to go for a six pick out of the Hibana into the IQ. And uh, second floor reading room is going to be the site of choice from newcomers right here. They looks like they don't want to, in fact, go back to kitchen, try it again. They're probably afraid of making the same mistakes, or they just want to keep the Captain site change the momentum. I don't know if that's a thing they that they uh, have. <laughs> being, this being the second lap around Cafe Dostoevsky, they want they are trying to take right now. Although you know, round five, they'll they'll just have to take that loss in stride and keep Captain moving forward. The on Cafe, of course, with four rounds on board. Pre roll swap, I think newcomers, even if they go into attack four to two, they'll have a decently comfortable cushion to fall back on should they face some difficulties during the attack. Of course, the ideal position they would like to be in this situation is a 5 1 lead, one round away from match point. But with uh, Team Waha uh, having one round finally under their belt, they might have something or a lot of things for that matter to uh, say about that. Second floor reading room, of course, means we're going to see once again that uh, somewhat top-heavy hold that we saw from uh, newcomers a couple rounds ago, way back in round 
two, no, that was round three, yes, where Lord Bane pulled off an absolutely amazing ace with the Jaeger. He hasn't done a whole lot since. The last two rounds haven't been his, so to speak. But uh, again, there's a new round. There's a new time when he gets to play Jaeger, and uh, he might just pull off something special once again. We've got the Dark Spot hold coming out from... Uh, not sure who that is. I believe that is Adam on the Wamai once again, but he's got a lot of propellers to deal with right now. Lots of flashbangs and lots of utility being thrown in his general direction. Lots of drones as well. Team Moha are stepping up their utility dump here and uh, their intel gathering, and no skill actually still goes down to Lord Bane. That is the Jaeger to take one. He's taking a bit of damage as well, but not enough to make him worry about it. And Adam, despite being stunned out of his mind, is gonna find Mello the Zofia. He's still taking the fight onto the piano, and then he will win that onto Nexus. Adam, what a shot from the Wamai right here. And Wamai and Jaeger so far have managed to shut down Team Moha very effectively. It's all down to Roxanne and Thanu here. And as more shots are being exchanged, Roxanne's gonna take a lot of damage. And he's actually gonna go down, and that is the gun of AMST that takes him off the board. The Echo chimes in with the kill, and it's all down to Thanu, the man, the nomad, on a solo mission. He finds Lord Bane. Looks like that was on the red stairs right there, but that is only one of five. Drops down the skylight, but he's got to deal with an Echo right now, who's given away his position by shooting in his general direction. But then again, so is Dhanu. His position is very well known. He's going to drop down to the pillar room red carpet and be shot up quite a bit, and he will not win that fight at all. AMST will win that second one with the bearing, no less. And uh, with that, newcomers on to round six will be winning it, going into roll swap, just like I said, in their ideal position, five to one. One round away from match point. No oh boy. It's uh, definitely a nice advantage that newcomers have brought for themselves. But Blackjack, I wanted to be very transparent on the opinion I'm about to ask you. I'm not putting you down on the spot here. You can, you, you can, in fact, ask me my opinion as well. But okay. were you expecting this kind of performance from newcomers? Ooh. Right. Um, I probably should have expected that question, um, <laughs> given the kind of match we're seeing. But no, actually, I uh, did not at all see newcomers pulling this kind of a play right here. 5-1 to one on roll swap. Are you kidding me? Absolutely amazing performance from them today. <laughs> but since you have allowed me the opportunity, I will use it. Foxy, did you think we'd be seeing this from the side of newcomers? Uh, all right. Definitely, I was not expecting this type of dominance. I, it's not like I'm counting them out, you know. It's, it's just that there's a difference between having so close and getting a victory compared to having yourselves a victory like this, you know. Or more than that, it just happens to be a 5-1 difference already. One could definitely argue, all right, Foxy, the fact that it's defense, it's on cafe, newcomers ha have a really good history on that as well, mind you. As I, I was just looking back on my notes and that is something I happened to notice myself. They do have a good history on it. It's, it's just that it happened to be all the way back in season one as well. It, 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 there's, there's just so many, uh, I would say, intricacies in terms of how this map is played. And more than that, it happens to be something that newcomers are good at. So, that out of the way, we'll be proceeding in round seven now. Timwa definitely need to pick up the pace. But meanwhile, newcomers, it looks like we'll be having a disconnect coming in from AMST as I quickly press the tab button because I don't want go into one of the videos i'll be very honest <laughs> there we go no. amst will be disconnecting though and uh, a, a very very different um a very different match that i'm getting to watch over here as i was just happening to look over the scoreboard uh, the, the skills the way that they're separated and uh, distributed around it's it's definitely a some a little something uh, everybody's got their own share, fair share, you know. I wouldn't really say there's been a little too much emphasis, but Lord Bane is about to find somebody. Oh, he does notice somebody there. Don't know who that is either. Cannot find that out from the sh uh, from the outline as well. But we'll still be seeing Lord Bane. Hope I think he's heard Roxanne out. His next is waiting very, very patiently, in fact. As you're the Jaeger, he's not going to connect that shot, but the counter peak is coming in from the other side as well. And yet, yep, yeah, that is the mute. Danu and Roxanne will be the ones who will be meeting up with Lord Bane any moment now. But Roxanne is going to win that fight instead. He's going to down Lord Bane. And he's going to finish up that kill as well. A 5 versus 3 already in the favor of Team Moha, mind you. A disconnection did come up and that means this match, this, will, or this round rather, might as well switch, slip away from the hands of newcomers. Well, 
there we go as i speak about it danu comes up with the seifer from downstairs that is that that is exactly why the mute was playing there but down comes in but the rev should be place as well so the satish will be watching this plan coming in from rest says, but there's another flank that he's got to watch out for as no skill picks up a double in fact it's all under adam now he's hopefully close to the shotgun not a fight you want to be picking not against the smoke but the smoke is going to miss that it's the echo versus the lq no yeah actually the echo is going to fall as well as though we're not quite good to cast that on the camera and uh, a very interesting very interesting play this happened in the last 10 seconds as i could not comprehend the way the way things uh, the way this things turned out because the nomad was looking at a place where see where she specifically plays the nomad charge for a non flag but anyways uh, that being said we'll be seeing adam in a really tight spot uh, in fact he's is cornered quite literally um he is in a corner though yep he's just i think he's just buying time for his uh, dear friend to reconnect i cannot remember who disconnected though but anyways we're seeing Adam making his way inside a cigar. He's just pre fighting away, waiting for anybody to beat him. But nobody will be doing that. Second At least not from the side of CES. They know exactly the advantage that they have for themselves is Paramount. They want to keep that, keep that the same way as well. Adam, not exactly in a place he can pick a gun fight and know he won't. And Nuxam will win that fight as well. Round 7 will go to the side of Team Waha as they walk away. The second round on board. As uh, things look good, look a little shaky right now for newcomers. They've also lost um teammate and there we go our rehost request has already come in and we will be going into another rehost coming in from the side of newcomers the fight to do is the score and we'll be right back on the other side of the rehost guys don't go anywhere as this match will get all the while more exciting The smoke's gonna connect behind that, that's gonna give away the smoke's position. The ash is gonna push in, she does not have the smoke's prone, but she's gonna get him as well. And this is a complete collapse from the side. Oh dear. PM. Oh my god, what just happened? The oh. from the side of Stone Heart. that's gonna be Linfo and Resto off the board. It's all down to Andre, she has a minute. He has a minute, my bad, to make this happen. It's probably been called out that Maestro is inside garage, and yes, Adre takes him out to use it to get two kills. Hiban is going to be using the flashes and probably going in for a plant. It's going to be a default plant, so Stoneheart might just be able to deny it from downstairs. As he sees the legs, he's going to fire some shots, but no, it's going to be called out that plant's going to be going down, and it's like cash. The flash bang comes out as bandits be flashed. Adre does not make good use of it as he lands some shots onto Stoneheart, and he's going to be one health as. Adrid clutches it successfully for Invalid is gonna take Kingu off excuse me, he's gonna be taken off the board by Kingu and there's a 2v2 right now. The plant is coming off from Cresto once again. Maestro's pushing up metal and Kingu's trying to push up the rotate and Maestro's gonna deny the plant for the last five seconds of the round. He's gonna fire more shots and the elder will connect onto Adrid and Maestro with the clutch for his team denying the diffuser, getting the last kill will give Shining Heroes round six. Smoke canister as well as 15 seconds left in the round, and never time enough to push it. It's now or never for them, as uh, without getting the plant off, they won't be able to extend the round timer. Chuck is going to look to go in, but he's going to get one that is he just on the board as he just took down Sam. And Mojo is going to get one that's come to let it do suddenly. He has to throw the plant right now with cover from Chuck, and that's what he will be doing. As Lem is going to try and push him, but there's no fist there for cover. He's going to find the smoke, do a lot of damage. But the castle is still here. The plant is going off. It has gone off for that matter. And now it's a 2v2 in the post plant. It's a 1v2 for that matter. All down to kill it with the castle of the UMP. He won't be able to do it. As Never Damage will make the plays happen for themselves. And take CCTV on around 9. Right there. He's going to take on Nanny. 
using a bullet hole piece right there. The Womai gets the kill. The slice goes down as well. That's Flanker taking down Mike. As Royce is taking down Cruzy in the meanwhile. The reflect had happened. The Ash charge away as well. As looks like. Oh, he's going to get one. The Thermite goes down as well. As he makes a rotation. And Flanker's going to get another one. That's a triple kill for the Legion right here. What is the man doing? He is ripping through Virtual Fire's attack. And Viper seems to be the only one remaining for the side of Monka's. The door of uh, Workshop or Surface, as you will. There's a runner come from Lusty Boy, but no, that's going to be. A the distraction might be because flanker gets the 4k through the window of supply room you know it's a 1v2 right now and danny has to try and make a 1v2 happen for his team but will he be able to the jackal sitting on the red covered hallway he doesn't even have the fuser and only so much time left for him as a class is going to be shocking away taking chipping away at his hp leading him towards the kaita for the eventual kill as jackal will go for the piece the kaita's hiding and that is that right here as jackal wants to make this happen he's gonna win. Shot from Nanny! He's gonna connect! Knifing the Clash and getting the headshot while trying to ADS on Kai's head! What? What? Alrighty then, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the game between newcomers versus Team Moha on the map of Cafe Dostoevsky. The score currently stands at 5 to 2, and we are back from the rehost. A six pick comes out from Nexus onto the castle, and I believe that was an IQ onto the IQ from the side of Adam from uh, newcomers right here. We're going to be moving to first floor kitchen from the side of the defense right now, and of course, since it is round eight. It means it is post roll swap. That is the blue team. Team Moha are the ones on defense. And being on defense, they have managed to put their second round on board, which was round seven, which went in their favor quite comfortably. Although AMST from the side of Team Moha, uh, excuse me, newcomers, had a bit of a disconnect last round. So that definitely helped, uh, you know, they helped Team Moha to win out the round. And. Uh, Definitely now with everyone back in the lobby, Five hopefully we don't have any more disconnections because now with both Rehost tickets being used up from both teams, unless uh, there is uh, some sort of admin discretion used, no Rehosts will be allowed from this point forth. So it's uh, certainly a very sticky situation for both these teams if one of their members gets disconnected because then uh, they'd be in a pretty tight pinch until they are able to get back in the lobby, which could take a long time given, of course, Rainbow Six Siege is um, custom match connectivity. We, we all know this, you know, all of us who play scrims and uh, custom matches for the fun of it, we all know what it could lead to in unfortunate situations. Danu, he's going to have a, a couple of bullet hole peeks onto the white stairs right here, playing the Kaid on the second floor of all places also, out on the roam from the looks of things. May, might just be a top heavy hole, but he's being tracked by the Jackal right now. That is Lord Bane, who is on his trail. But of course, Lord Bane is on the third floor. He needs to make sure that any roamers up here are taken care of first, and the Kaid can wait for just a little bit longer. Shots are being fired. Lord Bane trying to find whoever's uh, on the other side of Cold Room towards White Stairs, but no one being found just yet. I believe there was a Jaeger on the White Stairs, Raksan, and there are footprints to be scanned, and that is the Jaeger once again. Raksan being scanned, but he's all the way down the first floor. Uh, actually, the second floor, mind you. And uh, yeah, no third floor hold from the side of... Uh, Team Moha, they don't really need it. They need to just stay around on the second floor and make sure they deny newcomers on the second floor to uh, like uh, the best of their abilities. As uh, drones are going to be spotting where Raksan is sitting, the Jackal scan has, of course, finished. But that's not going to deter the attackers for too long. We got Danu sitting here on the pillar room, the red carpet hallway, as Adam unfortunately takes out Lord Bane. That's a TK right there. And uh, very, very unfortunate for the Jackal. He was on a hunt, but unfortunately he became the hunted to his own teammate. And that will, of course, put a massive dent onto this push from newcomers as we have Thermite going for a breach onto Coldroom from the sounds of things. And he might just be able to... He is, in fact, successful on getting that breach done. But it is a 5v4 with less than 50 seconds remaining for the side of newcomers on this attack, and they are not in a good position at all. Optica's got the diffuser. He needs a teammate for support if he is to make this play happen. Danu's watching from the hatch, and this could be a hold from a Team Moha that completely shuts down newcomers right here.
because everybody on second floor so far has been completely uncontested. AMST is going to see the Kaid, but will he be able to take him out? He gets the down, but the egg is approaching. Does he know? No, he doesn't. And he gets taken out instead. The egg is coming in for the peak, and uh, he will lose that. Salty 31 against Nexus in the meanwhile. So it is a three versus two right now because Danu is, of course, down. The plant is coming out from Optica, and he's going to have to stick it. But there's the echo with his drone, and he'll stop the plant once. Will he be able to do it a second time? It's a long diffuser plant time, and there there we go, the diffuser's dropped by Danu, who was revived. And Team Moha once again, very comprehensively winning the round. Round eight goes to their favor, and this time with a rather well-placed second floor hole that wasted a lot of time and um, one particular attacker life from the <laughs> side of uh, newcomers. And it just didn't work out at all. And especially with the echo remaining right towards the end, it just was not going to work out whatsoever for the side of newcomers on the attack. 3-5 is the scoreline, still in favor of newcomers, mind you. They are two rounds in the lead, which is somewhat of a heavy lead. But as we move into second floor reading, oh, oh, oh no, no, MST, not again. That is, that the man has had a disconnect, and this time we cannot have a rehost from newcomers because, of course, they have used up Defending their Rio ticket, which is absolutely unfortunate as uh, they're <laughs> going to be stuck playing a five versus four. Oh boy. Not a not a good situation at all. And uh, especially to have been 5-1 in the lead, if Team Moha make this comeback happen, it will be one of the bigger comebacks that we've seen in the W Black Esports Club League for Rainbow Six Siege. Foxy, what do you think we're going to see coming into these next rounds right here, given All the right, current some, situation? Something that pretty uh, happened to emphasize previously is... Wait a minute. Take the spike. Blackjack, you can hear me, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. I, I, was, I was just a little... Scared that I happen to meet myself again, but no. <laughs> uh, coming back, what I was saying. Like I said, you don't want to counter Team Moha, at least not when they happen. They're happening to have to get themselves a side swap, and that is on this round, in fact. The last one was amazingly well played. They not only had the retake onto the uh, floor above them, but that also denied so much that the attackers could do. That did not give them enough top floor control. That means no, no vertical play being established. That did not give them enough room to work with, even if they had to go for the last minute plan. And more than that, the flank was not clear. But look at this destructive start to this round as Long Bane picks up a double. In fact, Dunham and Nose can go down to that. That's your smoke and mute. Looks like the Jackal does not really like the SAS operators in this game. He's going to take them out. And uh, very nice. Uh, very good read, in fact, from Jackal. I've got to give him that. Lord Bane playing that perfection. Uh, realizing that there's, there's got to be at least a few free kills that he might as well get for himself. But look at this. The castle does get spurred out. It's going to be a 1v1 that he's got to win with the castle. But unless he gets exposed from the other angle. Oh, he's got to be wary about that. There's somebody else creeping up on him. That's Nexus. Oh, boy. That's somebody else, though. But look at that. The frag comes in. I think that was a trade. Oh, yes. That was Nexus and Lord Bane. Happened to trade that out. And a really nice gunplay from Lord Bane coming in today. I've got to give him that that already even with the Rios man has got himself a 3k that is a 3k we just saw happen Locks on. he gets a drone that has spot him on, spot him out but Melo is the one who is playing on the side of paintings as too close to the new hatch but that won't be open and the Atom comes in with the drop I don't think the AUG on the what I has noticed that out is essentially the AUG willing operator against another but the LMG will be out in the hands of Adam as, at least as of now up uh, it's like Melo's presence on the top floor is completely gone unnoticed as they were a little too invested on getting the castle. This could be fatal for the side of newcomers if they don't happen to convert on this early. Luxon taking a few shots, but he's going to get that frag eventually onto Salty Satish. And now Melo plays on a really impactful spot. But he's going to get taken out. A read because Reed comes in from the Thermite. Optica, that is. Luxon tries to go for the aggression, but he's going to get caught up by the Nomad. He's going to get lit in fact to the bits down all the way down to the last few hp that he's got remaining for the man he's gonna go up watch a few angles at least at least as of now that is a what he's planning to do the angle won't work to his favor because the plan has already gone down it's a post plan situation for the man the clock is ticking 30 seconds approximately that he's got to work with he's got to find two bodies and more than that he's got to find the counter diffuse as well trying to find somebody on the top floor but nobody's here to maneuver with the drop it will get hurt out mind you it does get hurt out now that he's in the pillars area yeah. it's two attackers converging on slowly and just so many bullets just to make this push work but roxanne will have to be very careful and how he chooses to pick his fights 
And he'll go for the white peak and get caught up by the thermite. And Optica closes that out as newcomers finally take the long overdue edge point for themselves. 6 to 3 is the scoreline as we proceed to round 10. Oh boy, match point it is from the side of newcomers and as Foxy said right there, very, very overdue indeed. 6-3 to three from a 5-1. to one. Two rounds going in favor of Team Moha, but will those two rounds be the only rounds Team Moha gets? Because again, this is still a 5v4, mind you, until AMST manages to reconnect to the game and... Uh, it doesn't look like he might be able to just yet. Maybe, maybe not, of course. Only time will tell. But uh, whether or not Team Waha can live to fight for another round is going to be decided right here, right now on round 10. We've hit the double digits of rounds and 63 being the match point. Scoreline is certainly things are getting exciting indeed. Third floor bar once again from the side of the defense right here. As uh, we're going to move into this round quickly. And uh, that last round, of course, very well played to Optica and Adam as uh, Lord Bane, of course, started things off with a brilliant double kill onto both the SAS defenders and then taking trading with the castle on the top floor. That took a lot of wind out of the sails of Team Waha and then losing the Jaeger. Not the Jaeger, excuse me. Uh, I believe there was a Womai in play. Yes, there was a Womai in play. And losing the Womai just did not help that 2 versus 2, which became a 1v2. And unfortunately, Roxanne was not enough to convert that into a victory. Even when he went to the second floor to try and use the angles against the attackers, even when he came down on red on the red pillars, uh, the carpeted hallway, and tried to hold it from there, it was just too much for one lone Jaeger on low HP to do for his team. Too much for him and too much for Team Moaha. 6-3 being the scoreline right now. They have to win three rounds back-to-back. -back, no flaws whatsoever as AMST has actually made his way back into the match, I just noticed. But too late for this round. He's going to have to sit things out. And if newcomers, of course, win this round, he will be here for pretty much the sake of being here as uh, the last two rounds will not, <laughs> will not have had any influence from him whatsoever adam once again with the breach onto the red stairs hatch and the jackal lord bane waiting to scan some uh, feet uh, footprints actually he's already dropped down that's something they've been doing for a couple of rounds right now and there we go the jackal scan has come out but that is i believe a scan onto whoever's on the first floor okay all the way down here and that is a defender looks like inside of prep room is he aware that there's a jackal coming up to him and that is Hanu here on the mute. Will he find him? No, the Jackal wins that. And the Hunter gets his prey. Lord Bane finds Hanu. And the mute goes down. It's a 4v4 right now. Man count equalized once again by the ever dangerous Lord Bane. As a hard breach onto the piano wall is coming out from the side of Thermite. And Lord Bane's making his way back up the bar stairs. Brown stairs, call him what you will. As he's just holding down some angles, but the default cam, of course, spotted him, making him push from a different angle. Salty Sith, he's just taking a bit of damage in the meanwhile. As, uh, well, not sure where the Nomad's taken that damage from, but the G8A1 LMG is uh, firing away from the IQ somewhere else on the map. Looks like that is inside a cigar lounge from the piano area all the way towards the A-bomb. Piano is uh, pretty much being held down from the side of newcomers right now. They've got a good hold on it. And as the drones come in, it should spot no skill here inside a bathroom. But did it? I don't know if that drone spotted the smoke with the shotgun sitting inside of the third floor washrooms. There's uh, definitely going to be a push coming in towards here any time now. Breachers are coming out from uh, the IQ as well. But again... It's a little bit of a standstill right now. Both teams are just waiting for the other to do something, make a push, make a mistake. And as that breach charge goes off, I can see the Jackal, that's Lord Bane, down below Raksan on the white stairs. That's going to be a fight, and another fight is here with the Echo, that's Mellow fighting the IQ. Less than 30 seconds remaining as Lord Bane takes down Raksan. Oh no, he accidentally shoots his own teammate. And of course, uh, Nexus is going to take full advantage of that taking down Salty Sethi. No skill takes down Adam. It's suddenly all down to Optica. He misses all his shots. Will he be able to convert? No, he won't. And Team Moaha will win round 10 of the back of some very, very unfortunate mistakes from the side of newcomers. Round 10 goes to them, making the scoreline 6-4, to four, still on match point for newcomers. <laughs> that, is, that, is, uh, that is a flick that could have converted, but uh, definitely, obviously, in his own teammate's head. 
but um, that was not something I was expecting Lord Vayne to do for having an amazing performance. You don't want to give away all your credentials like that. You know, you don't want to kill your own teammate. You want to get, this, get yourself that victory, but as we get a little invested in terms of how you see newcomers bring their attack out, something that we fail to notice is the fact that Team Waha has slowly crawled up the way very close, making this comeback. We've seen Team Waha have themselves as every single match on overtime so far in Season 3. That has been Week 1, every single match overtime. I think the first match went 8-7 against Bonkers. They happened to lose that, I believe. And it happened to be a 7-6. So, there's just so much happening, in fact. 8-6, mind you. Uh, there's, there's just so much happening uh, for the side of Team Waha that they have to bring their uh, points in board. They really don't want to be going back to Division 3, mind you. This is the team that has made it back from Division 3 into Division 2 with a lot of hard work. A lot of hard work for two seasons. And that is something that takes a lot. But now they're here in Division 2 and looks like they want to keep this spot for themselves. But it's something that has just been lacking at least as of now for them. Now we'll be seeing a side of newcomers bring out some... I bring out the bottom floor defense once again and that is that is just classic stuff and see if we will still see them take this away or not or rather i just happened to i just happened to say newcomers my my bad i mean team Moha. they've been amazing with the last time they came to a kitchen side more than that strategy that, that they had you know the retake on the top floor perfectly worked against a team like newcomers that is that is something we all have to see you know some some surgical work being done it looks like this time around the side pushes over to be bakery. Oh, yes, it is. Look, his orbit is already made his way inside. And uh, more than that, he's got himself some nice. Okay, please, please don't whiff your shots on your own team again. That is something we all don't exactly like to see, you know. I think he's gonna spot somebody, but no, the peak comes in from the mute instead. And Melvin with the SMG 11 tap, 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 and he finds the head of the jacket. A really good one indeed. From the mute, Melo will be watching it still from above and a really good up um, top floor hold coming in from the side of Imwa once again. Like I said, it's something that has been working out for them so far. It indeed proves to work out this round as well. But see how that turns out in the favor of newcomers or not, though, as they, they still do have AMST joined back. That means it was essentially a 5 versus 5, but now that has become a 4 versus 5 in the favor of Team Moha. The defense want to take this uh, to overtime. They want to make this comeback happen. They cannot let newcomers walk away with this. The stakes are so high for Team Moha. Constant Esports, they've, they've been grinding so much. Like I said, they sit on the sixth point, on uh, sixth rank on the division table. They want to move above, but will they be able to do that? Do they have what it takes is the real question. See newcomers make their way up top, but Saudi said he's going to take the fall onto Melo, and that is something that and that is something that otherwise more, adds more credit to Team Moha. But look at this, the Barbar gets hurt out and Raksan is going to be the first one to peek. And will be the quick, uh, no, will be the one to take down Raksan very quickly indeed. Still be seeing Adam trying to find any stray kills that he can. He's going to find one. No, he won't. He's going to lose that gunfight to Dunno one once again. And that'll be Melvin back. So, Dunno is going to be on site. That's the guy, the solid on the optical now. The one, the Thermite indeed, was made his way through prep room, but there's two angles that he's got to be wary about. And make that three, as it looks like he's not making it out of here. And he won't. Round 11 will go to Team Moha. And the six is the scoreline. One run away from overtime. One run away for newcomers for taking this match and walking away today. What will be the result, chat? What will be... What will happen to... I ask this very openly to everybody who's watching right now. Because we have a six to five the favor of a team that has been at the bottom of the leaderboard on the eighth position we have a five to six not in the favor but very close to taking this to overtime in the favor of team Moha, who happened to be on the sixth spot taking every single match on division two to overtime will week two be any different for either of these teams blackjack what are your thoughts on that well, uh, I don't know if uh, the beginning of week two is going to be any different because, of course, round five, uh, excuse me, round 12 is the round at hand. Thunder with the six pick out of the Valkyrie into the Pulse. Second floor reading is going to be the site of choice. 
And uh, the thing that is most exciting right here is be is the fact that this is the round just before overtime begins. This is the round just before we go to the most exciting part of the match, but this is the round that matters the most right now. The entire fate of this match, who wins to get a few more points for themselves? Who loses to get sent down one extra spot? All of it depends on this round right here. If newcomers win, they will put a match on board for themselves. And if a team Waha wins, of course, they will go to overtime and give themselves a very, very good fighting chance of winning this matchup and uh, giving themselves that well-deserved victory from, of course, all overtime matches that they have had in Season 3 so far. But again, this round, very important. The, its importance cannot be overstated to the point where we don't even know what's going to happen as uh, round 12 gets underway nice and quickly. We've got Nomad charges flying all over the place. We're going to have breach charges coming out soon from Lord Bane, who's actually playing the IQ this time. Adam has taken his place as the Jackal. A little bit of a switcheroo happening from the side of newcomers on the attack. But again, is it going to be enough? Is, is what Lord Bane needs not the Jackal scanners, but the IQ's GA-1 LMG? Those extra 20 bullets in a 50-run drum mag. As Adam's going to be busy opening up, opening up the hatches on Red and Heaven. And Lord Bane's already dropped down. Once again, you see this from him every single time. As soon as the hatch is open, you can bet that he is going to drop down it nice and quickly. But now that he's made his way towards the Cigar Lounge door, facing a white corridor right by the white stairs. Now he knows that the Jaeger is playing below white, uh, the white stairs because of the shots that were fired by Raksan. But again, will he be able to capitalize on that? Raksan's playing just on the... Blind spot of the hollow site, but the drone comes out from Lord Bane, and uh, he's going to make sure that he knows where these defenders are because taking them on is a challenge in and of itself. Roxanne takes a bit of damage, and he's going to be taken out. Lord Bane has gotten the first kill, and he's gotten the ball rolling, but he is low on HP, and the man needs to be careful. AMSC taking a different fight against Mello all the way towards Cocktail Lounge has taken a bit of damage as well. A claimer comes out from Lord Bane to hold down that position, that door of White Stairs Corridor, and Optica is in Train Museum. The man's already made his way in there as Adam's going to find Thanu. That's another huge kill. The pulse is gone. And that was inside of Chain as well. Satish, Satish excuse me, finds no skill. And it's all done to Nexus. And Melo looks like a Team Waha are collapsing. But Melo's gotten one. That's AMST. Nexus has been spotted out by the Jackal. But the plan is going off. Will it be denied? He's knifing in the smoke. But no, he actually gets it. Optica goes down. But the castle is going to be taken out as well. Adam with the double kill. It's all down to the Wamai. And he won't. He actually finds out the Satish and gets blown away by the Nomad's air jab. He's got two other attackers to go through in this 1v3 clutch. Looks like it might just be post plant as Adam. Yes, it is post plant. In fact, Adam gets the diffuser off. One versus two. Mello has to play to perfection and he will down one. That is Adam down. And it's all on to Lord Bane, the IQ with the LMG holding inside the reading room to try and deny this Wamai the clutch. Will he be able to? Or will Mello walk away with the victory right here? Less than 20 seconds remain on the clock for the counter defuse cycle, of course. And with a 7-second counter defuse cycle, Melo has to be very careful in how he manages his time. He's got less than half of it to go. And he's got to make this push happen. He's going to go for the diffuser. And he's going to go for the counter. But Lord Wayne's going to hear that. Will he get the kill? He should wallbang right now. But the Wamai gets off of it. That is it. That is the chance gone. And Lord Bane will secure the kill onto Melo. And newcomers win round 12. And unfortunate for Team Amwaha, but looks like we will not be having overtime for them. As uh, the IQ Elite comes out from Lord Bane, the man has done so much for his team. But a very well played Tim Mello. He almost got that off, but no intel on where the IQ was sitting. Made him too hesitant to go for the push, which cost him the time and the round and the chance for overtime. With that being said, newcomers are your victors on Cafe Dostoevsky. And what a dramatic finish, if I uh, say so myself. 7-5 to five is the victory scoreline for them. And oh boy, that match, it, uh, it had me on the edge of my seat. That is for sure.
but with that being said, we are, of course, going to be taking a quick break before we come back with the next game between the Peacemakers and Virtual 5 Esports, another match that is definitely assured to excite quite a bit. So uh, more C's action coming to all of your screens on the other side of the break. Stay tuned. Coming the kingfish. Danu is going to be holding down here while Mello is going to get, get to it for him. Oh. All right for himself as Mello with the Alda not stopping. He's going to get three. Mello, what are you doing? He's going to get Enigma with a quick headshot. It all comes down to kingfish and Mello with the 4K. Well there. Whoa, all right, Maestro. All righty then. Mello not stopping. Totally not Mello here. Goes to that doorway. Heartless. He's gonna take out the master cam, easy peasy for him, but the push comes in, but he's gonna get caught out. Ash is here to try and alright, the plan is already gonna go down. Beera with the plan on the reinforcement that Ash now. That is gonna be the touch up. He knows he's got a really good line of sight. He's on the rapid game. He gets them. Still got two more defenders to cut through. Defense, got to make sure they play this right. Ash on the triple kill. Does he get the quad? Onto the onto the bandit. That is Baba Yega. He's got to play this right. He's got to get the rappler. Where's the rapple game? It's gonna be a little too far off, and that is that point eight go to match point. With the double for himself, as it is all down to match show. Enigma on the evil eyes and the holder. He knows something's pretty small office, and he's got to try and make this thing happen for his team. He sees he can restart. The Alder will win. That's the first kill for him. In a 1v2 situation now, as the plant is finally going down. He's gonna focus on Blackbeard, but he has to focus on the plant, and he will be doing that. But and he downs him. The diffuser is down, and it is all down to Blackbeard ready to play against the match show with the older. He's gonna cross over the trend with the leader. No, he just has a diffuser, but he's gonna peek, and he'll be taking. Right here, what a play from the Maestro with the evil eye downing the Hibana on the plant. So many drones are getting dispatched, and a few pre fires come in as well. But he's gonna lose that fight to kill him, and a really swift take. He's actually holding down, holding Ooh. down to this very fast as well over here, and she's gonna get dispatched as that is a Zofia. The double kill so far, and so many. Flashbangs being caught out by the magnet and look at that peak from Killen. He's gonna punish Royce for a very little nice peak. Killen is gonna get one. He's gonna get the quad oh. kill for himself. Killen, what are you doing? He gets the ace. What a way to start off this match here. Half with esports. What a play from Killen here. He's gonna drop bodies left, right, and center as he secures the first round for half with esports. Seeing Sam trying to maneuver himself back while Vinci is gonna get himself a frag on the SMG 11. The C4 goes out. That claims a life, but Dopop is gonna refrag on to Vinci. It's a one versus one. Now Dopop is very low on HP. He knows he's got to make this clutch happen. He pushes there and he loses that fight. Oh your boy, Nevin Ivans are finally going to go to match point. There to provide support to his teammate. C4 also misses. The diffuser is already being planted. Diffuser being planted. 20 seconds left. Oh. Will immediately take out Hexes. He will find the third. He doesn't. Thermodyne eventually go for the refrag. We still see Goyo taking out Thatcher. And now it's just all down to crown the crown with a... With a... With just 5 HP remaining, thrown from the Goyo, immediately finds the head of Pulse, but Goyo will be there to oh immediate, dear. capitalize it, but he still has a lot of time, does he have it? 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 Two players from Team Quantum G1. Will they will they be able to find a miracle down here for Team Level 0 Esports? Stating that this uh, site is from the reading group. IQ hoping to get for the pre fire and Zitri will immediately get the headshot from Ooh. Slayer and he will immediately get Envy and gets a double kill. Zitri on fire. Oh. Are you kidding me, Zitri? Another kill taking out Veneno and still it's it's all down. Like it's it's it's, it, it's equalized. Both of them has the same player. It's just Mighty, Sexy K and Daggerfist and Jitri to cut this one out. He doesn't even see Daggerfist and immediately gets a kill on Mighty. What is going on? It's all down to Sexy K. I just can't believe. 
I really can't believe my team did not even see Koyo. J3 with the final kill immediately taking out Sexy K as they will finally get the win on round 5. And that too, it is a 4K on J3 and a misplay from Team Level 0 Esports. This is, of course, one of the key positions that a Black Bear can hold. And there we go, the Ian Candelas are being thrown in. The smokes are going up, but no, it's going to be denied instantly from Anikin. Uh, who's going to get Skipper and Rift right here? The Echo is absolutely insane. As he shut down two, he's going to get a third. And that is a triple kill for the man himself. The fight is still going down, mind you. Start up on the capital, we'll to get it off. And he's going to be teamed alone, no Beaver. He's going to end up taking out the planter himself as it is all down to Beaver to try and redeem himself in a 1v3 situation. He's got the... Oh, he gets the hammer out, but no, to no avail. Honeycat's going to get a quad for himself and the counter defense to go off. On the main door, who's still running, but no, Slayer doesn't know that there's one on main stairs. He can be taken out, but the defense comes in from Hypnotic. He's going to finish with the C4, and that is Mighty off of the board. Excuse me, Mighty taking hypertext on the board as uh, more shots are fired mighty takes a few shots but no he connects right there onto shot there's one more in bar one more pushing the side door he's gonna find the one in bar he does that's a triple kill for the bandit true is off the board and phoenix trying to take a bandit out is unfortunately gonna be facing a four versus two massive disadvantage and oh no the thermite could be taken out any second but no the bandit goes the wrong way the thermite tries to pre-fire but no he'll be taken out as well mighty with a run out getting the kills for his team as Rax is gonna find Gathomar, that's a big kill right there. The buck is off the board, and that's one aspect of the vertical gameplay and room clear removed from the side of Tira Esports. In the meanwhile, Hivana's opened up a little line of sight, I think, on the wall of prison. Oh, Rax is gonna connect that shot onto a third, and that's another one down. That's the Hivana off the board, just as I speak about her. He's gonna make his way towards bar. He knows there's gonna be people in Cigar Shop. He's gonna find another. Will he find the fourth? He's gonna light him up quite a bit. And that is, of course, uh, Kajit, I believe. Yep, he is. He goes down. As his official peak any second now. But no, the ace is going to be denied to the Jaeger. He's only going to have to table for a quad to just uh, deploy. As the Jackal will be going down as well. That's another big kill right there from Skishima. Senpai himself is on the second floor. As Mench is going to go down as well. The kill should be confirmed any second now. As the band is coming around the breach on the office wall facing Yellow Stairs Landing. There we go. Oh, he's just going to play around for a bit. The kill is confirmed. Finally as it's a 5v2 for Union Gaming to try and play instead. And uh, Jace has to be very careful of the Legion playing on the Dragon Stairs. Thermite knows that there's something there. But no, Senpai is going to get that kill. And he's going to get another one. And Skishima, dude, that is, uh, what, a 4k for him in this last round. And, uh, no. Oh, look at that shot on the Vitaly right there. What a play from Skishima, dude. Bringing himself back from the slightly less than stellar early game that he had back in the early rounds of this match and your winners on theme park are of course Eva All right then, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to uh, to the W Black the Esports Club League for Rainbow Six Siege, powered by LG Ultra Gear in association with ACT Five and Azorta Gaming and Games The Shop. I am your host, Blackjack. Joining me is my co-host, Sam and Foxy, as we are here for the game between the Peacemakers and Virtual Five Esports on the map of Villa. Once again, no clubhouse. Thank you very much as uh, we'll be moving to the beautiful Italian map very quickly onto the band phase. And the first band will come out from Virtual 5 Esports. The Thatcher is off the board. Foxy, how do you feel about the match we've got on hand? Well, I'm very excited in terms of how this match will turn out. And uh, more importantly, the teams that happen to interest me a whole lot more. We've got both these teams having an amazing week. One, let me just take a quick look at how the scoreboard looks like for them. That is obviously... Coach of five esports have got themselves a, a little more comfortable spot compared to the peacemakers, as um, because not exactly a good one that you would expect yourselves to have, especially now that uh, they, they've been they've been around for a really long time. So coming back to what I was saying, the peacemakers to sit on the seventh spot, that is second to last, not not a good spot, uh, at least not if you want the promotion onto one that is. Meanwhile, we will see which if I put it on the third spot. That is a very comfortable spot indeed. A very nice one as well for themselves. As uh, they sit very good and very, in fact, 
Now that I look, uh, look at it, uh, they've got their score and equal to Kira Esports. They played two matches and uh, they lost none of them, while the round differential is also happened to be on seven points. But look at the bans come out, coming out from both these teams. Thatcher, Monte, Echo, and Pulse to get banned from the side of uh, Nuko, um, excuse me, the Peacemakers and Worship 5 Esports. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's just that the last match happens to be around my head for a bit because it was just all the while more amazing to watch that. But we will be seeing ourselves head into round one. With that being said, and the rosters that you can see up on your screen right now Heathen, Pyromaniac, Kick Ass, The Flash, and Spidey on the side of the Peacemakers. While we have Unknown Gamer, Viper, Mike, Nanny, and Cuskit on the side of V5. Both these teams rock an amazing roster, and it'll only stand to see if they'll be bringing out some amazing plays as well. And Cuskit comes in with the first, I believe, Oryx play that we'll be getting to see in the new season of the Steel Wave, that is, and in the competitive play of the Esports Club Rainbow Six League. Now, let us see how that will turn out eventually, though. The first start is going to be Aviator and Games Room as we proceed on to this matchup. Mike will be going on the Valkyrie. That means the information trade-off is going to be maximum. I'm going to make sure that they want maximum information and the conversions will be likewise as well. At least, hopefully. At least, if I was a V5 fan, I would definitely want something like that. Uh, I just want to see V5 put something like that. But, and interestingly, they'll be bringing up extended room hold on the side of Aviator and Games Room. Or a reading game room on the side of the statue and trophy. Very really interesting as I just have to stumble up my words here. Just five seconds. Well, maybe I should just have a sip of water, but I'll. That, I'm, I'm excited to cast this one indeed. So we'll be seeing Unknown Gamer come out with some of his battery batteries first. He's going to make sure that the entrance, in fact, is not denied. But Cuskid is doing the godly spawn peak, as I like to call it. Got himself some uh, bullet peak holes that he's watching. Pyromaniac could walk into it any moment now. No, he is going to take the low road and uh, Anakin he does not have the high ground we'll be seeing Viper make his way back on the trophy room and then will be the one joining and that's your Vigil and the Jaeger a uh, very very classic set of ops who happen to do the roaming part as uh, it looks like I've, I've been having quite the packet loss uh, on my internet I believe I see those uh, see those signs up on my game top right corner I think every rainbow six Player knows that, but um, yeah, at least as of now, Kaskar will play now. Says he knows that he's got the hatches to creep up any moment he wants to. Let's see if he's going to choose to do that or not. The hatch does get broken in the beginning. We'll be seeing, uh, looks like the Oryx did get spotted out from Heathen. Very interesting. We'll be seeing them make their way inside. But Wipe is going to be the first one to pick out a frag on this match, and that is the, the Jaeger. Takes down Spidey. Wiper has been amazing with this play so far, mind you. And the snake bite, as I like to call it, is just amazing to watch him do that. The flash, meanwhile, though, comes out with an amazing kill. That is a refrag on one known gamer. That's your bandit off the board. Now, that does put them on a spot, but Cuskit will be here to stand up once again and finds a frag under Heathen. It's just been to and fro of uh, frags, but meanwhile, flash will be off. Too awfully close in feet. In fact, C4 comes up. That is going to claim nothing instead. But the Nomad charge, as it looks like there's been a server lag indeed. Yes, it is. I believe that is on my end, I suppose. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look that up quickly. But um, it looks like it could be. And I'm going to have to run a check on that. Meanwhile, a peek comes in from Nani. That's going to claim a life. And that's going to be the flash down. No, no more breaches because the Hibana. Is not alive anymore for the side of the attackers to do any more fragging, more than that, do any more breaching. No man almost spotting out the Vincent here. That is Nani playing very close. He's gonna get taken out. That's a nice shot from Kick Ass. As the Nomad Pyromaniac still holding very strong in the main stairs. He's gonna be watching if anybody tries to get a little too over aggressive, but nothing that he wants to convert, at least as of now. Pyromaniac makes his way back onto the side of study. Still watching this angle though, but there's some drone work being done by both of them. This could, this could might as well, well turn to be fatal. We'll be seeing V5 play this from the outside, that is, uh, say the site, but mind you, there's nobody on site, that means they'll be denying essentially the entry for the attackers to get on site. And Mike with a very ill advice pre fire is gonna get caught out by KKS, and that's gonna allow them to go for the plant now. Position does get rid of Viper, has to clutch this a one versus two, he does not even find the first kill. And the peacemakers walk away with round one. Really well played. 
from the side of the attacking team. Despite they start off on a very huge deficit, they managed to salvage what was possible of that round. And that being said, it's a 1 to 0. We proceed to round 2. Already the match rolling and nice and well. The ball has begun to roll down, if you will, as uh, Peacemakers take round one, get their, <clears throat> get their foot in the tracks nice and early and get the first round for themselves. And uh, again, we know for a fact that Villa, it can be a bit of a defender set in map, but again, it depends on how quick, uh, how quick excuse me, the attackers are to capitalize on any mistakes the defenders make. Kuskit out of the Elysian with the six pick, not sure what he's going to go into. Valkyrie is going to be his pick, and he's just confirming with his team. Valkyrie, it is. Uh, had the Oryx last time. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see any hatch jumping plays from the okay, side of the five for the first round. And uh, unfortunately, he just fell away a bit too quickly, if you will. The TPM managing their man count very well. In fact, I believe that was a 2v3 that they came back from. Uh, so, well done, of course, Pyromaniac and Kick-Ass. Round two, of course, uh, might be a completely different sp story. Excuse me. We might see Virtual 5 pull off something fantastic, or we might see the Peacemakers take their second round on board. If the last match is any indication, the last match, of course, between newcomers and Team Moha, something fantastic could happen very, very soon. Well, I say very soon, of course, only time will tell what we're going to be seeing from both these teams. But then again, it uh, uh, that time is yet to pass. Unknown Gamer is going to be here in Games Room. The Bandit putting down Bandit batteries on the walls facing office. And Mike is actually on first floor. The Mozzie on the Rome as Kuskid is here with, once again, a bullet hole spawn peek out of the study room door. But again, it doesn't look like he's going to be finding anybody as uh, everybody on the... Everybody in the Hold match on, seems to be facing uh, some sort of a lag issue. And uh, that is certainly not particularly good. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, indeed. This is, uh, yep, this is not a good situation to be in. As looks like we'll be having an admins rehost right here from uh, our own end, which will, of course, not take out uh, any of the rehost tickets for either Peacemakers or Virtual 5. So we're going to be right back from the rehost uh, between the Peacemakers and Virtual 5 Esports. Uh, we'll be back from the uh, on the other side of this video nice and quickly. The Stay tuned. Bomb diffuser has been dropped. Seconds and a frag. Does he find the yellow? He doesn't know where she's playing. She gets her 
But no, Dip Jones just too good. And Skiffy is, is gonna go down. That is unfortunately how proceedings are gonna happen. And it's a hatch drop onto Blue. And a rush towards side from the side of Valiant. Archangel Swans Chris Ross. Jack said goes down as well. It's all down to Warhead to do anything about this. Will he be able to? No, he's actually down and uh, taken out as it's all down to Angry Bot to do something about this. Time required for the counter DPs. Angry Bot, of course, giving enough time for his team to confer. But he's gonna go down to the as. You've got something on your hand, but the is gonna make it go inside uh, the map and get a quick frag on the player playing on 90. He's gonna spot the Valk and he's gonna get another shot. Lancer's gonna go down in the process and Ateban's gonna get two as the C4 comes out from the side of Stoneheart. That's gonna get Lancer and Invalid off the board. As Ateban is sitting inside and he's gonna get Stoneheart as well. This guy's just walking in. He's Hopefully some uh, the, you know the rotation from the diffuser the defender is trying to make and Nani on the other hand will eventually take out no skill Raksan will be there to take out Tusker eventually getting up uh, eventually getting an axis here but uh, Nani on the meanwhile gets a quarter kill he just needs one more kill for the ace and uh, there you have it boys virtual 5 esports uh, with uh, Nani making an ace uh, and quite making an entry frag as well as a good place there uh, gone down as Athar was not going to be paying attention as it's all down to that armor in a 1v3 he clutched this out so he has some time on his side he has some calls from his drones I believe as he is going to go, go for the repel his call has been his position is known Dhanu is going to be there he's not going to be able to contest that Melo is also going to peek him who's going to lose his life as uh, Diffuse is going down from the sun, but no death armor is going to be there to take him out. So Six line goes down, that's the snipe, and that is another huge kill. A lot of more utility that has just been taken out from Never Diamonds' arsenal. Nega's gonna find another one somehow. He's still alive inside of Cigar Lounge. Cobra doing so much damage for his team. He's gonna go for the jump out. Will he find one more? No, he won't. And he will be cleaned up on too by Mojo. But there's another one. And the dock gets taken out by Mojo as well. Mike cleans up onto one, but the bearing nine comes out. And uh, that is a quick double kill from Veneno as looks like level zero. All they wanted to do was jump out. Sparkle meanwhile gets caught up by Hasid. That's a Jaeger once again. Coming back alive. He's gonna spot the no matter. Look at that shot from Hasid. What are you doing? The Jaeger gets that track. What an amazing run out from Hasid. And the Jaeger is gonna convert that in fact. Even influential for most of these open. But at this pace, he's gonna get spotted out. He's gonna get a track. That's one kill. He's gonna get to find another. Yes, he will. Ooh. And a one tap. Hasib with the clutch comes in. Four frags and a quad kill clutch from the man. I'm not sure. Oh, oh, oh boy, EX7 coming with the big and he's gonna claim the life of my seven turn out of Ninja Creek. And a one versus two. He's gonna find the mozzie and he's got to find the whack. Everybody will be so low at EXP. He can even make this happen if he wants to. But the real question is will he be able to do that or not? He has some cover for himself, will be attempting the plan, and he'll be sticking it apparently. Oh, he's gonna find the Valkyrie, he doesn't know where the monster is playing, he's gonna re-attempt the plan, but this is gonna be a big plan, most possibly. Oh, the P comes in, and Ninja Freak comes in with the one who has two clutch from the side of Mercy really he's A bit of damage as well as he was gonna be coming out, Poseidon has taken one, B took another one actually, make that a 2v2 right now, make that a 1v2, it's all of a sudden down to Hasid, the castle, but do they get the plant off? Yes, they do! B is going for it, but he will be denied! Hasid with the play in the strategic position that he was in is going to deny the Thermite from going for the play.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the game between the Peacemakers and Virtue. All right, then, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the game between the Peacemakers and Virtual 5 Esports on the map of Villa. Oh, we are here, or almost here for that matter, uh, with the game post rehost, and we will, of course, be just uh, waiting in the wings for everything to start up nice and quickly between both of these teams. I'm your host, Blackjack, and of course, joining me is our co caster, Foxy. And, uh, Oh, yeah, Blackjack. Uh, speaking of which, uh, I, I just wanted to run a quick check. We've we've got the round history in, right, for for this matchup. Okay. Uh, we... The round history is round one, of course. No, I mean, to... I mean with with the host that is. Ah, Mister Reborn. Yeah. Uh, I believe we did, as far as I'm aware, I did uh, right. let him know that the score is one to zero in the favor of the mm -hmm. Peacemakers. Round one went to them on aviator and second round is where we will be resuming from right as uh, everything should be in order even the bands the bands were of course thatcher montaigne echo and pulse mm -hmm. which uh they're very interesting if you ask me but then it's villa and uh, when it comes to the second floor sites pulse can be quite the pain to deal with although he was a ban the last ban for that matter on the map which makes him a ban from the side of virtual five on the defense so Interesting mm -hmm. right there, but I believe V5 is uh, taking, thinking four parallel universes ahead of us <laughs> and banning the <laughs> banning the pulse outright, saying, you know what, we're not going to deal with that. We're just going to make sure that if we don't, uh, if we aren't going to play the pulse, we're not going to let TPM play the pulse either. Right. Yeah, that was that was an interesting ban indeed from coming in from them. The pulse ban that is usually we don't get to see a ban like that, but. On a map like virtual, uh, excuse me, on a map like Villa, I don't really blame them either. But that out of the way, let's not waste any more time and get right into this match that is going to be virtual five esports facing off the peacemakers on Villa. Uh, we did see the first round going in the favor of the side of the attackers. That is, they, they came up with a really good attack indeed in the beginning of the round. So that out of the way, let us see on how this match will turn out eventually, though. But any thoughts on how this match shall be proceeding? Well, this match definitely looks like it's going to be very exciting indeed, Foxy, if you ask me. Primarily because of the fact that, okay, we've only had one round in. and We've had a lot of um, issues, if you will, uh, coming back to this match, of course. But, you know, the technical difficulties are galore. Uh, especially now that we're approaching monsoon <laughs> it's not exactly about to be a good time per se hopefully we will of course uh, now not have any of those issues going forward from this point as uh, aviator is going to be the site from the side of virtual five once again peacemakers won the site uh, won this site pretty comprehensively in the last round but now they've got to do it all over again against v5 on the defense right now and will they be able to of course is what the question is right now we've got uh i believe it is actually the uh, the same set of operators that we saw <clears throat> excuse me outside of of course casket playing the valkyrie and not the oryx oryx and yana of course are allowed in uh, rainbow six pro league and competitive games now as it is operation steel wave gear 5 season 2 and a full season has passed since the introduction of those two new operators we have the rappel coming in from a kick as the nomad but i don't think Cuskid is gonna find anybody just yet no he's actually pulled away from that angle a while ago and uh, kick ass just waiting on veranda you, uh, the in-game volume <laughs> excuse me the uh, Nomad is just waiting in Veranda right here. Just uh, trying to find any defenders that she can. But doesn't look like she will be just yet. pre is coming in in her general direction. But Kekas is going to be oh, nice. And uh, he's going to be safe from that for the time being. No issues whatsoever for the man. As uh, we'll be moving uh, further and further into this round. Defender is actually downstairs. And that is the... Uh, Jaeger Viper on the first floor is being spotted out by the drones of the attackers and his general position is known but Kuskid in the meanwhile playing classical hallway watching the main stairs is he aware that the jackal is watching his direction right now that is of course the question 
Meanwhile, we've got flashbangs being thrown in by the flash towards site to burn out utilities. That takes a little bit of damage from the bandit shock wires, but nothing too much, of course. Kuskid in the meanwhile, still knowing that there's people inside a study, has to be careful on how he plays this out. And know he's going to go for the peak and get taken out. And that is uh, the flash taking down Kuskid, but Mike took down Spidey Time. In the meanwhile, the Legion got a kill for himself, as Viper's holding a longer angle on from the landing all the way towards the study entryway door on towards Aviator site. One minute, 15 seconds and less remaining on the round for both these teams as, of course, it is going to come down to a bit of a bloodbath. Hibana is going to be going for a bit of a breach right here. Meanwhile, Heathen on the first floor is trying to find the defender inside a bathroom. And that is Mike, the Legion, prone as well. Just trying to stay alive right now for how long? He's wasting a lot of time for Heathen and he easily has to make his way back up towards site. But he's got support right here from Pyromaniac. And there we go, he's gonna get the kill on the mic. That is the lesion of the board, making it a three versus five. But we still have Nanny down here. The Flash finds one more, that's Unknown Gamer down. And with the Bandit going down, makes it a two versus four. Viper is the only one on the second floor and Visual will be found out by the Jackal scan. He's trying to make his way back up the red carpet stairs right now. A Jackal hot on his heel as a viper playing inside of a vault has to be very careful as well no he'll be taken out that is the flash taking that kill he's gonna go for the plan now it's all down to nanny on a one versus four he will not be able to get anything however as the nomad from inside of vault will take the headshot onto him and peacemakers with a very dominating performance on round two only losing the one body so far as i'm aware round two goes to them All right, round two, of course, going to the side of uh, the Peacemakers right here. And 2-0 uh, is the scoreline on this particular match on Villa. But again, early scores can uh, be subject to change and probably will be, given the fact that Virtual 5 definitely do not want to lose this match whatsoever. They want to continue making sure that they stay on top of their game and they stay as far ahead in the league tables as they possibly can. A six pick comes out from uh, Mike out of the clash into the Legion and Trophy Room is going to be the site of choice from Virtual 5. They definitely have to try and uh, pull something to try and slow down the momentum that the Peacemakers are building up for themselves and it will certainly be quite the unfortunate situation for them if they were to go into defense in say like a 4-2 or a 5-1 the ideal situation will be of course a 3-3 or even a 4-2 if they are able to win four rounds flawlessly from this point onwards but again that is an that is why i call it an ideal situation because that sort of a thing is rare to see again i may have made the correct prediction in saying that uh, newcomers versus team moha newcomers would like to go 5-1 into row swap and they did so that was just a prediction just as this one is that virtual five might go 4-2 into row swap or it could be peacemakers going 4-2 into row swap round seven action phase is in effect right here on round three and once again reiterating for all of our viewers at home peacemakers 2-0 have quite the early game start for themselves but unless they are able to continue this momentum it will have it will pretty much be for nothing because we know virtual five you give them an inch they will take a mile and that is certainly what they are looking to do with this push on towards bedroom that we see the flash and kick ass making we've got heathen joining the first floor as well from the pantry stairs Making sure he's got all the intel on any roaming defenders that he needs as Kuskid. He's got the long angle from study room all the way towards the bedroom balcony. But that angle is being watched by the Zofia right now. And shots being fired by Spidey. And uh, Utility in the meanwhile is going to be burned from the flashbangs of the Nomad. The Flash has made his way into walking closet as Kuskid is holding down on the red carpet stairs right now. But one, two, make that of the bandit batteries are taken out. And Viper is actually going to take down Heathen in the meanwhile. That is the jackal of the board. Kuskid, here's the IQ's pistol and he's going to take him out accordingly. Pyromaniac goes down, but he did do his job of taking out the bandit batteries. Unfortunately, he lost his life in the process. Three versus five right now. And once again, actually this time the Peacemakers not looking too good for wear. They certainly need to pick themselves back up from this situation. And maybe they can, maybe 
Virtual 5 might just have needed the side change all along. Flashbangs coming out from the flash to flush out the Legion behind the blue boxes, but no pre fires come in, stopping the push and the Guma into the chain of the Hibana is going to make sure that, at the very least, that push is halted for the time being. He's going to be holding for, through the astronomy room desk with a couple of bullet holes towards the bathroom door. But Hibana, in the meanwhile, the Flash is actually going for the hard breach onto the main wall of bedroom. The bandit gets taken out in the meanwhile. A peek from Zofia is going to take down Kuskin. That's Spidey with the kill. Tay is starting things up for the side of the Peacemakers. Two versus four still. Uh, three versus four, excuse me, with less than 45 seconds left in the round. Another Goo Mine goes out from Mike onto Astronomy Stairs. And the Flash, Kickass, and Spidey have to make something special right now if they have to win this particular round. Mike is holding down Astronomy as Kickass yeah, gets taken out by Unknown happen. Gamer. And it's now a two versus four. That is all down to the Flash and Spidey. I believe that Heart Beach no, is a little bit unfortunate as well for the Hibana, forcing her to go for the bathroom push as well. Maybe it wasn't perfect as Mike takes a lot of damage, but no, both the attackers will go down simultaneously from Nanny and Mike. The Legion and the Jaeger taking down the Hibana and the Zofia very quickly in succession. That is going to give Virtual 5 their first round on board. Round 3 goes to them. Round four is going to be in play. Two to one is the scoreline right here as we're going to be moving back towards second for Aviator from the side of uh, Virtual 5. They look like they definitely want to... Uh, they look like they definitely want to get this up and running for themselves and uh, maybe winning a site, getting the ball rolling, get the, getting that first round is exactly what they needed as Mike goes for the six pick out of the Valkyrie into the Kaid, and we are going to be moving into round four nice and quickly. Attackers need to locate and defuse oh, bombs. Round four is in play. Aviator is the site once again. Viper playing the Vigil this time around. Got to be a little bit more careful, mind you, going for those roams because, of course, roamers haven't had exactly had uh, the best time. But uh, mind you, it can still be used at the very least to waste attacker time, if not to outright take out a few attackers from the roster itself of uh, the Peacemakers right here. But again, it all comes down to how the roamers approach their job as uh, Vigil and Nanny. Both of them are... I, I don't know if Nanny's going to go for the roam, mind you. It could be Kuskid as well. He's just going to put down his bandit batteries for the time being. We all know that Viper, the Vigil, has pretty much no other job outside of going to Rome. And uh, yeah, it's all down to what we are going to see from these operators in the meanwhile. As a Pyromaniac, he's got the IQ once again. He's got to be careful, mind you. Uh, shooting away at the Bandit Batteries in the last round from first floor, completely unaware of the push coming in towards him, is what costed him his, <clears throat> his life, excuse me. As uh, we see Viper halfway down the red carpet stairs on the red carpet hallway. Lots of red carpets in around that particular area of the map. But uh, not a whole lot happening just yet. Oh no, the window pre-fire comes in from Heathen. And Viper will go down. The Vigil unfortunately caught by the Jackal just shooting through a window. And uh, maybe there were a couple of drones on him. Maybe his position was known beforehand. But whatever the situation was, was not conducive for the Vigil to be roaming in that area. And Viper goes down very early in the round, indeed, just under the two-minute mark. And we're going to have some more footprint scanning action as the Jaeger is spotted out inside of Living Room. Not a good situation to be in with a Jackal hot on your heels. Yeah, definitely not a position you want to be in as a Jaeger. His position is being given away by the pings of the Jackal. As he's looking to peek the door of living room, but he then smartly makes his way out of that particular window. And uh, he's going to come back in now to try and find whatever he can. Kills, intel, whatever he can give his team. That is, of course, his best situation to be in. He's actually pushing the main hallway towards where Kuskin is. And oh, the bandit gets taken down. The double kill from the Jackal. The man has done a lot of work this round, but he's going to be taken out by Nanny. The refract comes in, but is it too little? Too late. We've got less than a minute, 10 seconds left on the clock for the Peacemakers to make this push happen. And there's some more shots are fired towards Nanny. He's wasted a lot of time for a few attackers right here. But now it's all Pyromaniac to try and take him out. And he will, as Unknown Gamer has taken a lot of damage as well. In the meanwhile, 
two versus four and virtual five not looking too hot right now as the push towards site is slowly but surely coming in gas cancers come out from the smoke as the valkyrie goes for an ill-advised peak and is punished for it it's all down to our non-gamer the smoke holding down inside a study room he's got people on 90 hallway he's got people on landing and he's gonna go for the peak and he will not be finding anybody i think i actually found one and that was kick ass off the board but the flash was there with the nomad right behind her for that matter taking the kill and the refrag to finish off round four which goes in favor of the peacemakers round four goes in favor of the peacemakers as well as looks like this is definitely around a match so far that is uh quite interesting to say the least if uh, I, I do say so myself Three to one is the score line on round five on dining. And we are going to be moving, excuse me, towards dining room and kitchen from the side of the defense. V5 definitely need to pick themselves up a little better from this particular situation that they seem to have found themselves in. It's uh, not looking good for them. Attack that is to, to say the, the very least. They can. But once again, they have to try and pull something out because if they don't, it's not going to be a very good showing from them on this second match here at day three of division two on the w black Beast club league for rainbow six siege season three dining room of course one of those sites that has uh, picked up when it comes to its pick rate and it's a uh, Viability meter, if you will, has definitely risen as well with the metas changing over time of Rainbow Six Siege. And uh, right now, as a side dining room is a site that a lot of teams are preferring over Aviator, which is something I never thought I would get to say myself. But uh, here we are. Operation Parabellum seems like such a long time away now. Year three, season two, and we're now in year five, season two. Two years since uh, maestro and alibi were introduced into the game that is a long time indeed but enough reminiscing about the past we're going to be moving in to the present round five Attackers between the peacemakers and virtual five esports as this Attackers looks like something defeat. that uh, a push from the peacemakers is imminent the jackal scan has already found somebody inside a site mind you and he's moving in towards the site through laundry he's got barbers that will give away his position but the hatch on laundry is actually reinforced that's not a particularly smart idea because that hatch has led to many retakes flanks and comebacks for defensive teams before of course virtual five they probably don't want to play around with the possibility of an attacker sitting on that hatch but then again it's a risk you have to take if you want to have an open angle to come back into a site in a tough situation the barbar has been taken out as pyromaniac is trying to find whatever utility is on top of the door frame and i think he's got it and that is of course going to allow the peacemakers to make the push happen and there you go that is the castle down from a double angle but unknown gamer might take down flash and pyromaniac nice and quickly making it a three versus four instead of a five versus four that uh, v5 would have wanted but there's more angles to be held here from the side of unknown gamer and mike is going to find one that's either on the board will he find any more that's a double kill for the man but no kick as finds one that's nanny gone and uh, he's been down from unknown gamer that's a double kill for the man himself and spidey time is gonna get disrespected on unknowingly by viper mind you. he was downed from inside of uh, pantry and uh, the c4 just finishing things up for the down to zofia v5 are going to win at round five for that matter uh, a little messy from the peacemakers for sure but uh we're going to be moving into round six. A three to two is the scoreline. One round away from roll swap. And it looks like this match is set to heat up. Definitely. I'm going to agree with you on that, Blackjack. This match heats up all the while more. Three to two is the scoreline before we go to round six and V5. Not exactly taking the advantage I thought they would. You know, Villa happens to be a map that V5 has played quite a lot. Even if we go back to season one as well, they've had their strategies on it. Looks like they won't be bringing that because they've had. Looks like, oh, there you go. So speak about it. The Goyo comes in as we go back to statutory. So we will be seeing ourselves head into this. Uh, up. It's going to be an uh, interesting look in terms of how we intend to. Uh, in terms of how we intend to judge the players. I mean, the way the Peacemakers are playing right now, mind you, they sit on the seventh spot. That's a not, not, not a great spot you're sitting on. 
And taking away three rounds already on the attack while you happen to be on Villa. Boys have done a great job. At least uh, you might as well give yourselves a pat on the back because that is exactly how you want to play Villa. Take away the maximum advantage while you can while you're in attack. When you happen to switch to defense, you happen to take all the while more advantage of the situation that you're in. Willa appears to be a defender sided map, that is what I'm trying to imply. But that being said, we'll be seeing ourselves head to this one, and the Wiper will be the one playing on study area. And very interestingly, a nice mid from the man, in case he wants to go for a long run. That is watching the bedroom peak coming in. Now we'll be seeing Cuskit come in with some prefires for himself, and uh, alright, looks like Cuskit is happy. I mean, of how he's in thing to make those calls for himself and anyways it's just all the while more prep that he can do and you can never be too prepared the brief is coming in from the uh, that zofia that is i'm not sure who that was the spidey and uh only interesting we have a spidey time in division three and a spidey in division two Bomb do we do we have a spooderman maybe in division one no um <laughs> at least at least for like all i can remember no we don't but uh that out of the way We'll be seeing ourselves here. That is outside study room. He knows there's somebody playing here, and now that has spotted Wiper out, he definitely knows there's somebody coming up. So we'll be seeing the push come in from the side of the attack anytime soon. Now the jammers are what is stopping the attack from the side of the peacemakers. It's, it's going to be otherwise more difficult for them to make this uh, push happen. But meanwhile, there's still being a lot of work done. And drone works are coming in, and so are the Sophia concussions and the impact means that's going to take on the goyo shields in fact still be seeing mike holding us down he's just going to fall back no the drones are going to fall back they've got enough information and conversions as well aromania comes up with the first kill a very good one indeed he's not going to survive the second game pick up all the fight but mike will be going to refrag him and another refrag comes right back in from even what a last five seconds that i've got to witness here Three was three in the favor of nobody. Still see everybody in full HP. In fact, a C4 goes out, but nothing to connect here from the side of unknown gamer. Looks like he was suspecting somebody playing too close, watching that angle all the way onto landing, but there's nobody, at least as of now. The jackal is still into play. That means the footprints will still be something that they have to worry about. That is the defenders, but Cuskit, the man on the bandit, is on a flank here. You might as well get caught up. There's a jackal watching this flank. It's any moment now. He's gonna peek this wide. Oh, Cuskit's gonna miss that one tap. He's <laughs> gonna fight this one back. Oh, did I just see? Oh, that's a turnaround from the Jackal. He's gonna clean the life. It's all on a Mike and a one versus three now. We'll still be seeing Mike get a frag. That's Spidey down the board. I still have two more to find. No, he won at least not for the first one. Does not connect his shots on the Vector's free fight on that long range. No C4 into play and no life either. The Peacemakers walk away with round six. As we proceed to round seven with the world swap in. And DPM stand above them at least for the while. And what a round coming in from them indeed. Well, let us see how things turn out on round seven as we proceed. Still at the advantage, like I said. Definitely an amazing advantage that TPM has got for themselves. Will they be able to keep that alive or not? Is the real question. We proceed here to round seven. Alrighty then, round seven. The roll swap is in play from both these teams right here. 42 is the scoreline and the peacemakers going into defense with four rounds on board for themselves definitely very well done indeed second floor trophy is going to be the site right from the get-go that they are going to be going into and uh, it should be very interesting interesting excuse me to see what virtual five brings out on their attack right defender now because as foxy said villa is a little bit of a defender sided map especially with the way rainbow six is right now how defenders can just sit behind a truckload of utility and wait for the attackers to come to them while they execute some cheeky flanks and uh, peaks and uh, whatnot you know it's always a fun time to see where the meta goes and it's one of the biggest uh, strengths of Rainbow Six are constantly changing meta. And of course, with the new gadgets, can't wait to see the way, the way, excuse me, that teams bring the motion. Did I, I completely forgot what it was called for a second. <laughs> Proximity alarm into play. I, I completely blanked out. How could I have forgotten? Two days into the new season, I have forgotten the new gadget's name. Okay, brain. Thank you very much for that. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see how teams use the proximity alarm because we've already had some uh, 
discontent, if you will, between uh, pro players as to what what this gadget means for Rainbow Six. And not going to bring up Malusi just yet because since we are not going to see her in competitive until next season, that's year five season three, which is a long ways away. We've got a lot of things to go through before year five season three is even a thing. And um, right now, year five season two is the fresh season on the boat. Everyone's playing it. Everyone's getting their ranks, doing their placements. And to get on that soon, Mike is going to scan these footprints as soon as he gets in range. He's waiting. He's found a very blue one. And that is Wamai, the heathen all the way on the other side of the map, sitting behind a shield, I believe that is. And that's only one ping that the jackal will get. Well, technically two pings, the initial ping and then one extra. But that's all that the jackal will get on the position of the Wamai of that blue footprint. We're going to be moving farther and farther into the round right here. As shots have been fired, the sledge is already down. That's Viper. But uh, Unknown Gamer finds Pyromaniac in the meanwhile. And uh, there we go. Another defender goes down. That's Mike taking down Kick-Ass. It's all down to the last three. And the flashes are not in a good position whatsoever. The all is trying to give him whatever support it can. But solo on HP against three attackers. Or two, I believe, that is in his general vicinity. Yeah, I don't know how much he can do in this situation. As uh, meanwhile, Spidey, time, uh, Spidey and Heathen are fighting a different battle of their own. Unknown Gamer holding down the red carpet stairs as Maestro has managed to make his way towards the other side. Nanny takes a lot of damage, not a lot, a bit of damage. But again, the push to a side is happening from the side of Virtual 5X Esports. And there we go. Nanny's going to take one down. Nanny's going to take two down. That's Spidey and the Flash. It's all down to Heathen in a one versus five. The man on the Wamai is stuck inside the bathroom with the AUG on the hollow. And as ADSs are taken out all around him, and as uh, utilities from the attackers are being thrown into a side, they're going to set up the plant. And they're going to try and get it. A drone comes in, spotted him inside the bathroom, give it away his position. And the push is in. And there we go. Hibana will catch the kill. Kuskid onto Heathen to finish things off. And a flawless round comes up from the side of Virtual 5 Esports. They take round seven and are one round away. One round away from equalizing here on round eight. Definitely something that... Oh, uh, look at the scoreboard there. Mike will be getting seven frags for himself. This time around looks like uh, Piper is not exactly having a great time. Uh, the MVP of Division 2, that is the rank holder, the MVP for Division 2, I like to say. It, is, he's been on the top of the game, of his game, and of everybody else, in fact. As that is what the scoreline says. But that out of the way, we'll be seeing ourselves head into round 8. 4-3 the scoreline. And... Uh, Looks like uh, the attack did work in the favor of V5 and massively, in fact. The way DPM played that was not something I was expecting. You know, like I said, DPM will take maximum advantage of going into the advantage that they have, they have in front. That is, the 4 to 2 that they had for themselves turn, just turned into a 4 to 3. Virtual 5 Esports, all they need is to run around on board and get this equalizer. And then it's all the while a more easier journey in terms of how it looks like as you try to make your way uphill. But something that really is not found for is the fact that the Peacemaker is not taking maximum advantage of the, what they have to work with. But it's not essentially a targeted ban that we've come out from either of these teams, so it only accounts to how the saturation, skill saturation, in terms of how this map goes out, is looking like. We'll be seeing Kick-Ass bring out, oh, right, a Spidey time is gonna, Spidey, only Spidey, Spidey 8119. Is going to come up with a spawn peak early and it's not going to find anybody it does stay there for a little too long does get dis detected as well so it only makes sense on why the man would like to play with that out of the way we'll be seeing the Vulcan shields being deployed from the side of the goyon site as well so all right we can understand how that is looking the man but um uh, anyways we'll be seeing mike and nanny do some drone work as well blackjack how do you think that these attackers, that the way they've played the last round, do you think maybe we see them walk away with the advantage on this? Oh, well, they definitely could, Foxy, if you ask me, uh, walk away with the advantage once again. But it all comes into how they approach this push. Last round, they had a good idea of gaining intel and executing on it, isolating the defenders one by one. As uh, outside of Nanny getting a quick set of uh, a quick double, in fact, 
when the side push, push excuse me was happening they all they did was isolate the defenders take out the roamers take out whatever defender they could find and there you go viper he's gonna start things off that's pyromaniac off the board already the jaeger is gone and i believe that is the 90 hallway jaeger who was alone no support for the man kick has all the way down at main stairs the other bend of 90 hallway isn't exactly doing much for the dead Jaeger right now. But Spidey, he's on a flanking roll right now. And he might be able to find the attacker on Astronomy Stairs. That is Cuskit. And I don't think he's any more aware of the fact that there's an alibi on Astronomy Stairs. But there is a Claymore on top of Astro Stairs. That is going to stop the alibi from pushing up for the time being. Spidey's just holding that down contemplating whether or not he can find an angle but the flash is gonna find viper that is a huge kill the sledge is gone and that is inside a 90 looks like it was through the drone hole as well so kudos to the flash for that for controlling the alda enough but unknown gamer is gonna take down heathen in the meanwhile that's another huge kill that's the goyo gone and there we go the claymore is gonna be spotted alibi is gonna get it but at what cost will he be able to get the flank off unknown gamer is gonna find the flash and that is another one down that's the maestro gone it's all down to spidey and kick the Womai and the Alibi, the Womai, will he find whoever's on Valkyrie right now? Maybe, maybe not, but the Spidey's position has been given away and he's going to be shot through the wall and taken out by Mike. It's all done to Spidey, the Womai, on a classical hallway. He's going to see one and take down Mike. The plan is going off, however, and there's an IQ on his flank and he will take him out as Nanny will secure the final kill onto Kickass and that will give Virtual 5 Esports round eight. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. They have, in fact, equalized between themselves. Virtual 5 have equalized with the team of the Peacemakers. 4-4 four four stands the scoreline in no one's favor on round 9. And to answer your question, Foxy, yes, the attackers definitely will be taking that advantage. Well, they definitely did. And indeed, a really nice execute, though, coming down from them. Um, more importantly, it is the fact that somehow... It turned into a new border, if I may. I don't know if you happen to have a similar outlook on in terms of how I'm emphasizing the fact that Willa just happens to be a new border. But now with border and Oregon and soon, that is, yeah, I know I know that still hasn't happened yet. It only happened on the side of you, not in our server, but soon would happen. And so now with border being replaced. The pro league map pulled by oregon somehow i feel like willa is taking up the mantle of border you know it happens to be a defender sided and a attacker sided map all the while well more you know it's, it's all of a sudden at the end you cannot really make a decision or maybe is it that virtual 5 esports have had enough of not out giving away rounds in fact to the peacemakers as they're putting more on board a really good uh, display of skill from the side of virtual 5 esports indeed we will be seeing ourselves go on around 9 4, four is the scoreline. The equalizer did come in from Virtual 5, and it's like they don't give away the advantage that they have at least brought it to a 4 to 4. Wiper is a product, the ledge once again, while we'll be seeing the frost being entered from Heathen. Very interesting. So, it's like the swift attack that we've seen Virtual 5 East was bringing out will be stalled by a little bit at least. Got to bring in some more drone works. They're going to make sure that that they're vaulting in any any little bit of a desk that they're happening to cross over as well. You know, you won't be moving along with all the while more swiftiness. As I, might, I might say that the time to get swifty. No, it's just getting all the while more fringy now. We're seeing Pyromaniac all the way on the side of the landing. Spidey will be joining him in the classical hallway as well. We've got so much, so many people uh, emphasize in terms of how they intend to hold the main hallway for themselves, but not enough utility being spent there, mind you. That might bite them in the back, and that is the peacemakers not realizing the fact that you've got to spend utility in things you want to hold down or anchor down on. Two bar wires, two bodies waiting to get dropped is my prediction on that, but let us see what happens. There we go. The first body does get dropped. Jaeger is going to face the lead from the side of Wiper. And there you go. Wiper once again coming in with the snake bite. The man has been absolutely amazing. But let us see how that thing turn out eventually as we proceed ahead. Wiper bringing out the sledge indeed. And that is something everybody's got to worry about. Well, meanwhile, speaking of uh, Wiper, though, we've uh, also had Wiper playing some amazing stuff. And I think the. Uh, yep, yeah, there we go. 
I think something that uh, everybody would is uh, seeing Wiper pull out the case like he did the other day. That was the buck, I believe. Yeah, that was on the border. In fact, some amazing stuff that we got to see from the man. But let us see if we will be seeing something of that or not. There you go. The IQ does get taken on by Heath, and that's your that's Nanny of the morning, dude. A very important frag for the man. As we will be seeing a known gamer come out with a few pre fires. That's with Sophia. Still got four attackers alive and four defenders on the other side. Ikas will be coming back up as he's realized there's nobody pushing. Because as that is not the directional push that is coming in from the side. But the attackers, it's coming on from the side of the entire north area. And they're getting a piece done on the main area. But look at this, the impact route tries to come in. Spidey tries to go the bandit trade, but he's not going to connect that in time. And he gets taken away. That's something that Spidey should have anticipated. Flash is going to take on Spidey himself indeed. But Flash is here to pick up another kill. Meanwhile, Kikas drops one and the Jackal goes down. This suddenly turn in the favor of the Peacemakers. And yes, it will unknown game. The last one to fall from the side of V5. We see them take away uh, another environment indeed. 5-4, to four, one round away from taking this to match point. Peacemakers in the lead. All right, Peacemakers, looks like they're picking themselves back up once again, winning round nine, taking the game to five to four and going back to Trophy. Once again, just like I uh, mentioned for Virtual Five when they were on the defense, it might just be that what the Peacemakers need is a round under their belt before they can attempt a side that they lost on once again. And this time it's going to be second floor Trophy from their side as it looks like uh, this match might just heat up quite a bit. Dare I say we're going to see overtime, or are we going to see Defenders some beautiful plays that uh, secure the round rounds for one particular team? These next three rounds are going to be absolutely vital for both these teams right here. As uh, if the Peacemakers manage to win out two back-to-back -back rounds, it will be the victory for them. And if uh, Virtual 5 managed to win uh, three back-to-back -back rounds, that will be the victory for them. However, if both of them equalize on round 12, 6-6, six six, at the end of round 12, 6-6, six six, then that will, of course, mean we are heading into overtime. Something I personally uh, have a little bit of a pet peeve is uh, I know that it's just been a while, about two days since the... <clears throat> proximity alarm has been introduced but we haven't really seen it be used to the terrifying extent that uh, a lot of rank players online have been uh, you know mentioning that this gadget could potentially be a game changer and i don't disagree with that at all the uh, the new proximity alarm is definitely going to be a game changer but i believe it's one of those gadgets that's going to take time to cement itself especially with the operators that have it you know goyo has it castle has it but then conversely rook has it as well as nanny has made his way in towards the aviator and no he does not know for a fact that pyromaniac is sitting in here but pyromaniac is going to get refragged onto by unknown gamer the zofia taking that kill uh, both of them of course caught me uh monologuing just a little bit about the new gadget that we have the shiny new gadget but that is uh, something a point to be safe for later as now it is a four versus four and we're still just about going to pass the two minute mark on this match right here things are definitely looking uh, quite interesting indeed as uh, this round is definitely going to decide who takes match point or are we going to see an equalized five to five score or going into round 11 once again these next three rounds are the most important in this entire match as more drones come out from the side of v5 they want to make sure that they have all the intel that they need and the hard breach is coming out from Kuskid as well. No contest from the bandit, but there are shots being fired. That's the Legion Spidey from inside a bathroom, uncontested, yet he hasn't been pushed out of here at all. And that is, of course, something that Virtual 5 need to correct for themselves if they want to make this push happen. He then dropped down onto the stairs next to Kitchen. Not sure what he's doing down there, but there is a unknown gamer down here watching up from the angle through red carpet hallway. Kick ass takes a bit of damage from that very same angle that the Zofia is watching, but again, not being taken out. The man can still inflict a lot of damage as uh, we might have a possible flank coming in from Heathen the Wamai. It's coming up one of those stairs. I'm not sure if that was red carpet stairs just yet. But Zofia's lifelines are being used and unknown gamers 
Claymore is gonna find Heathen. That is unfortunate for the Wamai. He could have done something really special, but as the flash is down, it's all done. Oh, there goes another one. That's Kikas down. It's all done to Spidey, and he will be taken down as well. The SMG 11 comes out from the side of Viper, and that will give round 10 to the side of Virtual 5 Esports. Round 10 going to them, of course, means it is a 5 to 5 scoreline. Equalize on round 11 in no one's favor. A Viper definitely playing out of perfection. But the man has himself for 25 kills in the. In. <laughs> First week that is amazing. As uh, I, I personally like to call that a snake bite. It's, it's been the nanny and the wiper show inside of week five when it comes to coming down with frag. But speaking of which, we'll be getting also defenders protect two. your bombs from being defused by attackers. Mm. Right. <clears throat> Thank uh yep, unfortunate for um that I was just <laughs> I was uh, drinking a little bit of water and you caught me in the middle of that. But uh we are of course gonna be up with round eleven as we have an infographic for Viper right here. And uh, that is, of course, uh, something for all of our viewers to check out uh, his performance in uh, the few days that we've had Division 2 for. And the man has done quite a bit indeed. He's been uh, one of the highlights, for that matter, of uh, Virtual 5 and Division 2 in general. And uh, he's been absolutely outstanding so far. And these infographics are, of course, uh, one of the shiny new gadgets that we have. I that I believe like the Esports Club League for Rainbow Six Siege for more information to be fed to our dear viewers at home so that it is never a dull moment when say our us as casters find a bit of a a bit of a mental block to exactly articulate on what's going on in the map. Speaking of what's going on in the map, Unknown Gamer, the man's got 10 kills for himself as we seem to have a little bit of server lag. Uh, unfortunate for both of our teams, but it should be resolved fairly quickly. And we're going to be moving into the rest of the round. Nanny actually finds Pyromaniac. That is the Jaeger of the board. And uh, that's a huge kill. The Carbine can be very useful indeed. Coming in to the late game as we have a Pantry push coming in from the Zofia and the IQ. But is the Maestro aware of this push happening in his general direction? Because, of course, there's also another push from Viper in towards Laundry. Spidey's the only one watching the Pantry entryway door. But the Maestro could fall victim to a peek any second. Now, Spidey's actually given up that angle. And we might see a push come in. We've got ADSs being burned. That's the flashbang in. And the Flash actually gotten off his evil eyes, but the Heathen is actually going to find Nanny in the meanwhile. That's going to equalize the man count and get the refrag for the kill onto Jaeger from earlier. A hard breeze coming in from the Hibana on the single wall of a pantry in towards sight. But is that an angle you really want to take while being on the lower ground on the stairs right here? A peek might just come in from the side of the defenders onto the laundry door. There is a C4 that was taken onto the hatch of laundry as uh, the Maestro unfortunately takes out Jaeger's ADS along with the drone that he was trying to fight. And it's going to come down to a bloodbath in this last minute between both of the Peacemakers and Virtual 5 Esports. Mike finds one that's Heathen on the board. And that is the Jackal taking down the Bandit. That's a huge kill. And that is going to swing the advantage. But no, the Flash and Kickass find one. They find two. And Spidey finds a third. That's Mike down. And suddenly, the Peacemakers are very heavily in the advantage right here. Virtual 5, from a position of potential power, they have been knocked back down to the ground. And Kuskip with the Diffusers, all that remains with less than 45 seconds remaining for himself. He's got to contend with kick ass the mute the flash the maestro and spidey the valkyrie but looks like he's not going to be taking that fight anytime soon as with these remaining 30 seconds virtual five definitely want to confer right here take a little bit of a time to figure out what went wrong and fix their push their idea their strategies accordingly the push comes in from because he's gonna find the maestro but he's gonna be shot through those foot level holes Made by a shotgun earlier in the round by Spidey. The Valkyrie gets the kill onto the Hibana, cleaning up and finishing things off. And the Peacemakers will, in fact, be the first ones to hit a match point here on Villa. And the score is 6 to 5 on round 12. Um... Uh.
Um, <clears throat> all right. So six to five on round 12 is certainly a situation that I don't think a lot of uh, our viewers were definitely expecting, given the way the early game was going heavily in favor of the Peacemakers. But they are, of course, here on match point. That is something a lot of people would have predicted, that they would be the first ones to hit match point. But again, match point is one half of the deal. They have to win Defenders this round to win it all. And meanwhile, Virtual 5 Esports, if they want to stay alive in this match, if they want to have another chance at making a comeback happen, they need to win this round. Peacemakers are going to be going towards second floor Aviator, looks like. And uh, things are going to heat up quite nicely to a nice and... Uh, Nice and toasty temperature, if I do say so myself, on this 12th round between both of these teams. Because, again, things could get ugly for both these teams. If Peacemakers win, that's it. Game over. Match goes to them. And if Virtual 5 wins, then we get to see, at the very least, two more rounds of gameplay, or three. And given both of these teams, if we were to go to overtime, I believe we would go... All the way to maximum overtime indeed. But that is, again, a tale for the future to tell. We are here on around 12. Action phase is rolling. And uh, we are definitely going to be looking into what comes next. We've got a roam coming in from Pyromaniac. And he then joining him on the other side in a statutory. Trophy is being held on by Pyromaniac, but there, I believe, is somebody already on the walk-in closet and or bathroom window, for the matter. And Viper's on the astronomy window repel as well. It's a quick take from the side of Virtual 5 on towards this area of the map. But as lifelines come out from the Zofia, they've got to deal with two defenders, I believe, that is Heathen and a Pyromaniac. And so far, they haven't found either of them. Of course, uh, the Mozzie takes a lot of damage. That is Heathen, uh, the Mozzie, fighting away with the attackers. Pyromaniac has fallen back towards 90 hallway, leaving Heathen to rotate back through the red carpet stairs. And as the Jackal tracks him, he's going to know that, wait a minute, he's all the way back in sight. I can't do anything from this position here. Knock, knock. That's only going to leave them with a little bit of heartbreak. I believe they're doing that on towards the side of uh, Statutory. Not sure why the Hibana was using her... Uh, x Carter's Palace there, but again, I'm not going to question that just yet as uh, we're going to be moving into whatever remains of this round. Less than a minute 30 on the clock as uh, all the defenders, it looks like, have made their way successfully back towards site to do a turtle hold for the rest of this round. Kuskits is taking down a few boxes as um, more joining is going to come in from the side of Virtual 5 on this attack. They definitely need the intel on this turtle hold. Where are all the defenders and where are their possible locations? As you can see, Pyromaniac is actually prone. He barely gets away from the open window behind him, but he's not going to get away for long. He downs the sledge, but Viper's going to be the one to get that kill. The SMG-11 wins over the uh, 416 uh, Carbine Rifle. And uh, that's unfortunate for the Jaeger, but he is out the board. Viper will live to tell the tale for at least a few more minutes, at the very least. Or this last minute, for the matter. Less than 40 seconds remain as... Uh, Virtual 5 have to go for this push right now if they want to have enough time to go for the plant or get all of the remaining defenders of the board. Cus is going to go for a hard breach onto the vault. No, I don't think he will be able to because, of course, that wall is electrify electrified by Kaid. Again, situation not looking the best that it could be as a grenade comes in from Viper. It will be thrown in to take out the electrical. It will be able to. And the Hibana will be... Oh, okay. The Zofia's already inside. And that's a knife from Unknown Gamer to the Flash. Will he find another one? Yes, he will. And Kuskin finds either. It's quickly a one versus five. And Nani is going to take out Kekas. Not before Kekas took down Mike, though. But that is Mike. Uh, excuse me. That is Kick-Ass off the board, and that means uh, Virtual 5 have managed to equalize on round 12, and you know what that means, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready to rumble? Overtime, 6-6, six to six is on the boards here on Villa. Oh, boy, I was not expecting this match to go overtime and overboard, in fact. 6-6, six to six, not something that I thought... Put on it, at least not another way it looks on paper. Both these teams they have, to have themselves a highly different contrast. Find everybody joining us now. I just want to run this down 
everybody once again the fact that the peacemaker they sit on attackers need marginal score the bomb. peacemakers are on the seventh spot in the league while virtual 5 esports happen to be on third spot so look at the difference you know look at look at this staggering difference in fact the way in looks like this is over lag indeed have a little bit of a there we go the players are players do happen to look like they're te teleporting but it's just because the servers have been been a little too menacing in fact uh that is why we even had to change the host mid match and uh, that that are the way coming back to what i was trying to say is v5 they essentially have themselves the second spot as you can say anyway because EA esports and v5 had a tie it come down to the round of stuff and stuff but yeah that's how it's looking so coming on to the fact that v5 they happen to be on top of the top three of the video peacemakers happen to be on three the peacemakers have definitely put on an amazing show so it's not only been that two and four that has been going on between them but it's also the fact that they took down a marginal score defense against their fellow opponents They're very well done indeed but i don't understand this is going to be the victor of that towards the end of this match six six will be the one that we are looking at as of now kcash will be holding with the one once again on main says while we'll be seeing unknown gamer make his way through Along with Viper in here, that is, and Nanyan Cascade, in fact, has everybody on the side of the attackers, but it looks like Pyromaniac has found himself on a little bit of a pinch here. Just gonna fall back, not going to. Sizing him. Defense, a bit more on that encounter. Not definitely not something I would be taking if it. So, alright. We will still be seeing ourselves up with the way this match has been turning out. 50 second mark is on Ethan. He's got himself the, the night himself. Very good use. Very well indeed. Tends to. And oh, oh, this could be influential. He's going to get that frag. And yes, he will. Unknown game goes down. Ethan, well played, man. That was, that was one hell of a play from uh, Mozzie. Himself a nice one to help himself with it. The information. And then the C for, from down below. Okay, by the Mozzie. Good news of utility. That does put the side of Peacemakers in uh, on, on a fair advantage. Not essentially a whole lot, but at least enough for the while. A 4 to 5, and there's two defenders, mind you. Right, that means they can even make their way back up. They could go for the flank if they want to, but they will. A little too early. Pyromaniac is going to claim the life of Wiper. That's Wiper down. Your main frag, and in fact, the star performer for V5 this week of the board. Okay. We've seen Cusket go for the. Reach while Mike will be up top and Nani will be picked double kill very interesting it's a very important frag as well but Wamai is the one who's picking up a fight Nani and Nani is gonna win that a triple kill for the IQ Nani comes up with the answer and Mike gets another half around the side off in the advantage of TPM is suddenly in the advantage of V5 walks away with that on the back of a Nani on the IQ is unstoppable the commando with the ACOG comes to play takes it home for v5 takes them match point all righty then match point it is for virtual five seven to six it is in their favor and a curious little bit of tidbit for all of our viewers is the fact that this is the first time virtual five are taking the lead here on this map uh, so far, they've managed to equalize and come back from uh, unfortunate situations that they found themselves with uh, due to, of course, the Peacemaker's efforts. But now, they are in the lead, and the first time they take the lead is when on overtime match point is definitely a statement being made here. We're going to be going to first floor kitchen from the side of V5 now on the defense, and round 14 is I where it all has come down to. Almost, ball. mind you. Because if the Peacemakers manage to win this round, if they do, we'll be going into round 15 maximum overtime. And that will be the most hype possible to be generated from one single game. Division 2, the bloodbath division, as both me and Foxy like to call it. The division where it all goes down. You have teams from Division 3. You have teams who have managed to stick it out in Division 2. You have teams that have been relegated from Division 1. All of them looking for those victories all of them looking for the w's if you will 
and it is always going to come down to a close game between the teams that we have on show here. And today, it is overtime match point, Virtual 5 Esports 76 against the Peacemakers. And uh, it is a showdown of the highest order. Well, almost of the highest order, mind you, because Division 1 is still Tier 1 and all that stuff. But uh, it's semantics. We're going to get to that later. Division 1, that can, that can wait. That can wait for another couple days. We are here on Division 2. And, the th and uh, again, match, as I said, is heating up. But again, Dining and Kitchen being the site, it's probably a smart choice from the side of V5 because I'm pretty sure Peacemakers were expecting something like a second floor bedroom. Uh, excuse me. Second floor uh, trophy or second floor aviator, but it's not going to be the case. The Flash is going to be joining into Pantry. He's the only one doing that as, as far as I can see. And it looks like a little bit of a top if you hold as well from the side of V5. A hard breach comes in from the Hibana onto that single wall of Pantry. But once again, is that an angle you want to take? Especially if V5 managed to make their way back to site completely unharmed. A drone is going to spot where Nanny is playing and the Jaeger is going to make the jump down to Red Carpet Hallway back towards the site. He's got Unknown Gamer for support as well just in case anybody's running around here. But there is a Spidey inside the living room watching the Red Carpet Stairs. And the entry into Memorial, he hears the Jaeger and will get him. And that is Nanny gone. A huge kill. And Nanny was just fresh off the 4K from the last round. And this round, he's off the board. But, of course, that is uh, just one kill. They need to get four more. And with Virtual 5, we know that they definitely will not be stopping until they have won the round or all of them are dead. And uh, it's a commitment of Pro Rainbow Six that they have to take. As we have more utility being thrown in from the Peacemakers to try and make their push to site a little bit easier. But it doesn't seem to be going anywhere just yet. We're about to hit the 60 second mark. More magnets are coming out from Mike the Wamai holding inside a memorial. And Viper's going to find one that's Spider Maniac off the board. That's a huge kill. He's going to find another Viper with a double kill. It's taken down Spidey as well. And there goes the IQ and the Zofia. Two gigantic kills, especially in this situation for TPM, as they didn't need to lose another. That's Heathen down. The Bandit is off. Going off for that matter, but Unknown Game is going to be, going to be down instead of sight as the push has happened. Viper goes down as well, and now it's suddenly a 2v2, all down to Kuskid and Mike as Unknown Gamer is down in a very unfortunate situation. He's just going to have to hold, but we've got Kekas here on the main hallway pushing towards Memorial. Shots are finding his own direction. The Flash finds Kuskid. It's all down to the two versus one. Mike is all alone in Memorial. Will he be able to pull this off? He's got to. He's going to fight the Hibana, but no, he won't be able to win that. And the Flash with the double kill to finish things off is going to help the Peacemakers equalize. The second overtime round goes to them. And this is it, ladies and gentlemen. Overtime match point round 15 maximum overtime it's all come down to this this entire match has boiled down to this one round round 15 is on board i have no idea what unknown gamer was over there it's white peaking i don't know who walked into that havana hole from the side of pantry but with the smg in hand white peaking and unpeaking and happening to cross from one uh, one side of the map to another one side of the side to another i don't know what definitely something that i was not expecting to see and not while the stakes are so high getting yourself an advantage against the attackers that was so dominant and so variation in fact so marginal so variation was definitely a lot but uh, something that looks like wefi just could not hold it long enough as it does bring us to the maximum overtime, that maximum rounds in a match that we could go on a competitive level. TPM and V5. It's going to come down to this one round. The one might as well get some protections in Blackjack. Any thoughts on who's taking this one? The oh, one who wins this me. takes the match. <laughs> um, I mean, just a prediction. You know, this just a uh, uh, you know, mm. opinion at the end of the day. Mm. So, yeah. Given what we've seen so far, right? It, you mentioned Boa Villa being the new border. 
like right. how border is one of those maps that is perceived to be defender sided but you can have days where the attackers absolutely demolish rounds round after round for that matter and villa definitely applies to that particular subject because today we've seen a very similar situation from both teams you know you mm -hmm. had tpm going 4-2 into roll swap when they were in the attack and then you had virtual 5 equalizing from 4-2 to 6-6 when they went to attack right. and after that both the rounds that have been won in overtime have been from attacking teams so if the trend is to be followed here and i'm gonna base my prediction off of this if the trend is to be followed then virtual five are probably gonna have a bit of a mad scramble but they will be in, but they will end up taking it all and right then, so we fight okay got it mm -hmm. then, it's, it's it's not like because <laughs> you chose v5 i would to say the peace maker. so meanwhile our, what the chat is supporting is it going to be v5 taking this match or will we see dpm walk away with this one both of them so dialy need this one but more dialy tpm is going to be the one that wants to and, and looks like a runner from the jaeger is into play he's gonna spot at the drone but he's gonna fall by blackjack that is all yours Thank you for that, Foxy. We're going to be moving into the remaining minute and 50 seconds and less, for that matter, on this round on overtime match point. As uh, there's a little bit of a thing for all of our viewers, you know, if uh, the uh, text at the top says overtime, not to be confused because we are not running infinite overtime uh, rules here. We are running this round as the final round of the entire match. As uh, Pyromaniac has been spotted, no, actually he hasn't been spotted by that drone that was inside of living room with him because of course he's prone behind that half wall of living room that has given him just a little bit of cover. Mike's gonna be throwing up flashbangs and I, wait, is Pyromaniac, uh, now I don't mean to say that he is, but is he AFK? That would be a very bad time to go AFK uh, in this particular match, but then again, Again, I'm just speculating, and it looks like he has not. He was just there waiting for calls from his teammates. Meanwhile, a hard breach has already gone down on study towards game's room. We've got Mike on the first floor right here. He might be the one to find Pyro. But again, the push towards side is happening, but no, the Ash goes down, and that is Kick-Ass, and Spidey is going to find another. That's Viper down. Virtual 5 are not looking too hot right now, but the shots are in. Unknown Gamer and Kuskit are going to take down Kick-Ass and Spidey, respectively. Three versus three. More shots are being fired towards side. Kuskit... Uh, no, he actually didn't find anybody. I thought that flick went onto a head of a defender, but no! Unknown Gamer's gonna take Kuske's head off. That's unfortunate. You don't just do that to your own teammate. But the Zofia is gonna have to plant. Pyromaniac's gonna find 90 in the meanwhile. It's a 1v3. All down to Unknown Gamer to close this up for his team. He's not gonna find the Legion. He finally will. Will he find the Maestro? He hits him a little bit, but again, no kills taken. And no! The team kill comes back to haunt unknown gamer and the Zofia not able to confirm on any of the defenders outside of Legion will be the loser of that encounter and the peacemakers despite being taken all the way to maximum overtime from 4 to 2 to 8 to 7 they will be the victors on round 15 on Villa Oh boy, what a match we've had. Wouldn't you agree, Foxy? Oh. Yeah, definitely. I've got to agree <laughs> with what you said, Black Jack. I mean, it's one, one hell of a day to kick off week of uh, Division 2. Yeah, definitely some, something amazing that we've all got to witness. But uh, that out of the way, it, it was indeed um, a day with uh, so, so, many, so many changes uh, off the flight. And uh, more importantly, I'm very glad that all of our viewers stayed and supported the stream, uh, more importantly. Uh, but that out of the way, Blackjack, I hope you had a great day casting with oh, the yes. matches that we got to witness. So definitely a day that I think uh, in a long time I can officially write this down in my book. We haven't had any coastline um, con clubhouse being clubhouse, played. Clubhouse. No clubhouse <laughs> being played in an entire day. That's a record, at least for the TEC Clubhouse League. So I'm gonna write that down definitely. But <laughs> we fight though, walking off with almost victory, definitely something that they could have walked away with one, but it did come down to it come down to so many other. You know, it's the little stuff that matters, and the execution just could not happen from the side of we fight with that. Being said, we will be ending today. But the from the as the last match is. Too late, you know, for happening to begin. 
right now you want to make sure that the player comfortability is also put in mind so that is why it has been already pushed to an off stream match we'll be back tomorrow with the most we will be facing four matches on stream guys mind you yes that is right you heard me right we only had two today there, there were so many so many stuff there's so much stuff excuse me happening but uh, tomorrow we'll be back with four matches on stream every single division two match will be on stream and i cannot wait to cast those with blackjack and i cannot wait to bring that all of that siege action everybody who's waiting in chat right now well thank you once again from me i'm foxshot and joining me is blackjack and we'll see you guys tomorrow once again be there 6 30 right here on the esports club channel have a good night The moment of creation is a form of magic, where an off becomes an on, a zero becomes a one, then another, and another, until, deep in the complexity, you discover order, speed, reliability, power. Experience the WD Black. MVME SSD. Fueled by darkness. Level up to MVME SSD performance.